Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to your HCS 2018 finals. The wait is over and it has arrived. It is the Halo 3 2v2 showdown and it is just around the corner. Now our Halo 3 duos have been preparing for this amazing battle that they have got going on on some of your favorite Halo 3 maps. Maps such as Construct, Heretic, The Pit, Narrows, you name it, Guardian, they are all there and I'm so excited to see them play it. Now we've got $10,000 on the line as well as eternal Halo 3 bragging rights. I want to get straight into this. My name is Lottie Van Prague. I am hosting the desk for you today. And I'm alongside two incredible Halo players, actually. I'm going to say that now, guys. I'm going to put it out there. You have won championships yourselves. So we've got a whopping ring on Clutch's <laughs> finger here to my left. And we've got Elamite, who has won numerous amounts of championships. The most. Welcome. The, yeah, sorry, sorry. The most. I'm going to correct myself there. The yep. most, mate. Don't worry. I'm not playing you down. Uh, gentlemen, welcome. This is the Halo 3 2v2 showdown. I'm so excited to get this started. Yeah, I think we're both excited about this. Both of us each having our own national championship in Halo 3. I mean, it's going to bring so much nostalgia seeing the likes of Roy, seeing the likes of Flame Sword, Neighbor, Best Man, you name it. Just competing in a game that we're all too familiar with. Almost too much Halo 3 has been played in my life, but I'm not ever going to say that. No, yeah, no such thing. No such thing at all. No, no such thing at all. Don't worry about it. You, maybe you should have played a little bit more and you would be here today. <laughs> um, right, so let's look at what we've got coming up later today while I roast these guys <laughs> on my left here. Uh, now, we've got Self-Proclaimed versus Optic Gaming on the cards. I'm really excited. This is actually the match I think everyone really wants to see in the finals. Uh, I think this is going to be such an exciting one to kick it all off. Uh, Self-Proclaimed being the guys that are constantly on matchmaking. They do not play this game. They play in their sleep. They, they're on, constantly on matchmaking. They're the kids that you just don't want to meet online. You're just like, well, what is the point in playing these guys? They're so versed in playing online and matchmaking. They're kind of just a bit obsessed with the game. Well, the best part about this is, you know, everybody, I've had so many people challenge me, and it's like, I used to play Halo 3, like, 60 hours a week. I don't play it anymore. It doesn't matter if you beat me now. It doesn't count. But now all the pressure is on the people that have been playing it, and there's no pressure on Roy and Flamesword right now. But if an OG Halo Pro comes out and wins this against all the people that have been waiting for this opportunity to get their matchup against some of the greats, it's going to speak wonders for their talent back then, back then, really. Yeah, I think one of the misconceptions here is who is actually the favorite coming into this series? I mean, Guntype and Evader have been playing MCC for years. They've been playing Halo 3 for so long. Wow, everyone else has been playing Halo 4, Halo 5, H2A and whatnot. These guys, they love Halo 3 so much that they've stayed dedicated to it. They practice for so long. They love the game. But it's all going to come down to this. Is it going to pay off? Is all their time spent going to be in the limelight, or are they going to fold under the pressure? We're going to have to find that out. Most definitely. And of course, we've got our top tier teams here. Optic Gaming, Carbon, Rectify, GMS, and Last Supper. I love that name. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, these guys are the ones to watch out for. Uh, gentlemen, who are you favoring on that list of top tier teams? Like, Who would you put your money on? I mean, I got to go with my boy, Roy. I mean, Roy and Flame Sword, those guys have been around so long. Um, you know, we've had so much experience together, so many awesome memories. Uh, you know, I got to go with them. On the other hand, I've run into Gabriel and Fantasy online a lot, and those guys are no joke, and they've been doing an extremely good job playing online. And, uh, you know, it really comes down to those moments. Like, I remember, you know, back in the day, uh, especially Ogre 2, when we go over his house and play, you know, we used to say, like, our internet just literally isn't as good as some of these other people. And if anything, it was a benefit to us because we had to try that much harder online. And when it came to land, when we're all on an even playing field, we were just that much more prepared to go into those series. And it would catch a lot of people off guard. And that's why you would see these complete blowouts in the game where you might otherwise have close series online. Well, gents, let's take a look at the format we will see for this showdown uh, to see exactly how this works. We are going to be having a double elimination bracket. Uh, so it's the best best of three and best of five matches. Now, as I said before, there's $10,000 on the line. The first place takes away $6,000. Not too bad for a day's work. Uh, I mean, one incredible chance to be able to, to, to dust off your Halo 3 skills, come and bring it to a main stage and at DreamHack Atlanta. Not too bad, right? The six grand's nice, but the bragging rights are what everyone <laughs> here is playing for. They want to be known as the best 2v2 Halo 3 team in the world, and that's what they're competing for. And I think a lot of these new MCC kids Gabriel Fantasy, Master Fear, Tusk, they're going to have something to say when it comes to the likes of Best Man and Neighbor and, and Roy and Flamesword. I, I think 
one of these one of these new teams is going to be this victor and going to collect that cash and claim themselves the new Halo 3 2v2 champions. I know I know that you would love the bragging rights if you could have it. Would you be up there playing if you didn't have a job to do? Absolutely. I mean, <laughs> no doubt. I'd, I'd probably already be advanced to the grand finals and the winner of the the winner of the actual 2v2 tournament would be forced to play me individually for that, but unfortunately, I do have a job to do this weekend. I am going to stay dedicated to the HCS circuit. And someone else is going to have that championship. Look, this guy is talking way too much about himself. So if you do want a 1v1 uh, clutch, then just make a room and let him know. Uh, so here we do have our finals bracket here. We've got our teams that are going to be fighting for their place in the grand finals and to become the champion of our Halo 3 showdown. Now, it's, it's interesting to see this because it is a 2v2 setup. Uh, we've been doing Halo 5 all day long, where it's 4v4. How is this going to change in terms? I know it's Slayer. I know it's a little bit different, but is it fast pace? What, what sort of the game? type is it going to be? I mean, it's going to be so interesting because, I mean, we didn't even, the only 2v2 we, we really did back then was like half pick. I mean, there was, uh, there was just not a whole lot of Halo 2 action. Maybe on Guardian we'd play a handful, but uh, we, we just didn't see it that often. So it's going to be an opportunity for, for the play styles of everyone back then who haven't prepared as much to go up against some of the new age kids who, who are prepared and have been grinding it out. And I've never thought I'd say this, but I mean, it's so bittersweet to move over after what we just saw in the end of that Halo 5 series um, to move over here. It's just been a phenomenal day. Well, gents, let's take a look at our schedule for the evening uh, because we've got some exciting games left. Uh, Self-proclaimed versus Optic Gaming. And then the rest <laughs> is to be dis What a great schedule that is, guys. Uh, look at me there giving you all the information. Goodness. Well, goodness. we have four matches on main stage. That's what's important. We're going to get to see <laughs> four straight <laughs> matches of Halo 3 2v2s. And there's going to be some great action going on because I know every single team in, so far left in this tournament is very good at Halo 3. Whoever is coming to play today will be able to claim that top seed going into the finals Sunday. Absolutely, and we love a mystery, you know? Leave leave them wanting more, that is what I say. Now, we're, we're going to take a closer look at our teams. Uh, so we've got Vader here. Uh, as I said before, they're the matchmaking gods. Uh, they're ready to challenge these two old school players who are legends in their own right. These two guys, you know, I'm feeling that they probably could take a couple of games from these guys if they're lucky, but I do think it's going to be fairly difficult. I don't think Luck's going to have to come down to it. I think these guys have enough skill and they have enough practice on these game types. I think if, as soon as this 2v2 tournament was announced, I think Evader and Guntype knew that they were teaming with each other and they started practicing. I mean, Evader is one of those players that has been playing, like I've said, MCC for so long. They know they know everything that Roy and, and Flamesword are coming into this series knowing. So there's not really an advantage for Flamesword and Roy other than the main stage experience, other than the tournament experience, how to compose yourself, how to work under pressure like that. That's something we're going to have to see out of Evader and Guntype if they want to compete against the likes of Roy and Flame. Well, we've got two absolute legends on our screen right now. You can see Flamesword there and Roy right next to him. Roy known for his shot back in the day. Uh, unbelievable stuff from him. And then Flamesword coming through with that objective play as well. I mean, these two guys seem fairly unstoppable. And I, I do really think that the ranking system for these two guys with the matchup is a lot higher than we're seeing from these two matchmaking gods. Right, the only 2v2 tournament that was ever thrown by MLG back in the day was an actually reach. And I actually had the pleasure of playing Roy and Lunchbox in the finals of that. They came out on top by just a couple of kills, but it really was Roy's shot that really made the difference towards the end of it. I mean, Roy's shot is magnified in a 2v2 because you're in so many 1v1s, you're in so many 1v2s, and Roy can get himself out of those by himself. So so he has a teammate like Flame Sword to help him, but he almost doesn't need it. Now, Elamite, we've got on the screen Guardian, Narrows, and Heretic here. Uh, bringing back some old memories for you. Oh, I mean, uh, the amount of times I've lifted across the map on Narrows is probably countless. And, uh, you know, with those players, too, uh, I know they've all had ex excellent experience on all those maps. I mean, you found those three maps in almost every single series we probably played. The only thing missing from there is the pit. So, um, you know, I had the privilege of carrying Roy to his first victory, and I think he's going to be able to help Flame Sword with that now. Oh, no, Flame did have a win in Reach. There we go. Asterisk. There we go. <laughs> Maybe. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, well, I'm just about to get this ready, but I'm just going to turn to the audience behind me because I can see a whole room filled with people. Guys, are you ready in the audience for this showdown? Yeah. Here we go. Love it. Love it. Well, I'm so excited to throw it over to your casters. Let's get this going. It's on set and bravo. 
Thank you, Lai. I can't believe what I'm just about to say, Andy. It's 2018, and we are about to cast over two of the greatest ever Halo 3 players. I grew up watching these guys. I'm genuinely in disbelief that I'm in this position, and I'd have no one else to do it with. I uh, know. I'm so excited. You and I have been um, giddy backstage getting ready for this matchup. I know all of you. Halo 3 Hold chan up. in the building. There we go. I mean, uh, I'm so excited to be here. We, so, we thank you for joining us in the room. We thank you for joining us on stream. We're getting into game number one. It is Guardian Slayer. Let's have everyone on their feet in the crowd. Let's make some noise here, Alana. Let's make it loud. Let's make it proud. And oh my word, we're starting off by watching some Roy. All right, of course, first thing to watch here is this camo grab to see exactly how this goes down. Gun type already has eyes on it with Snipe, as you'd expect from, eight, uh, from S3. Oh boy, and looks like a little bit of a trade there. So, Royal Fall for a second hill drive. Great job from Gun Type to hit that body shot. Roy tried to get away, unable to do so. Yeah, and the sniper rifle is very much in their control. So at the moment, Optic Gaming and Flame Sword, they're gonna have some difficult battles, but nice oh. shots there. It does get the beat down, picks up the snipe. Unfortunately, Invader coming into top goal there. Has that sniper rifle back. Roy, we know about his shot. How can he finish this one off? Invader's gonna challenge Brave because Roy's still got that in the tank. Yeah, Roy, of course, just like Lottie said, known so well for his consistent shooting. Now these guys have tied it up two to two. Where they bring Snipe here might be interesting. Nade's coming in probably from green and Snipe, so they're gonna have to play this a little bit slow. Roy's gonna need to take his time, but that's a great kill from Flame in Blue. So that's gonna give them an opportunity to pivot here. I am so excited to be watching 2v2H3 with Roy and Flame right now. This is wild, but it's of course, surreal. they've got some fantastic competition in Evader and Gun Type who are getting ready for a blue push. Snipe's still in the hands of Roy here. Evader's blue one. Roy, Roy does not know. Roy does not know he's right behind him. He's soon about to find out. Here comes Evader around this corner, and Roy's going to get shot in the back. Manages to get away there, and here comes Flamesword around the corner. Flamesword with some good shots, and Evader oh, gets taken down. Flamesword still Ooh. got it on the sticks, baby. There's Woo. a bit of a bag. Look at that. More kills. Oh, he's shown across the stage as well. Flame is here to play. More kills for Roy and Flame. Roy still with the snipe here, watching S3. Needs to stay alive, so Flame right now, his responsibility is to watch that top mid push, and he finds it, pushes him back S2, so great job. That's exactly what Roy's gonna be telling Flame in that moment, is make sure they don't come top. Oh, are you my kidding word. me? Roy! They've been playing this, man. They've been ready for this, and Evader, brave challenge here. Roy going for the quick scopes up to top snipe, controlling blue at the moment. A beautiful little quick scope onto top mid there to pick that kill up, but Flame Sword and Roy seem to be working so, so well together. That. Evader put his back now. These are poor pushes. From the other side, I mean, look at that flame able to get shots on top mid. Roy's going to come around and, and, and clean up that kill on the camel. That's 7-2 to two here in favor of Optic Camel soon. And we're going to be popping. You can see Flame Swords in position for it. Roy's going to be spotted here. Gun type does pick up an important kill. You can see that camouflage popping up there. Roy's going to have to hit some shots here. He has two yep. bullets to work oh, with. Flame Sword barrel comes spawn. the respawn, barrel spawn's big. That's going to really help them get this camel. Two shot beat down from Roy. Doesn't get the kill. If Ada gets taken down, killing spree for Roy. And I believe that that camo was burned. Yep, that's going to definitely be a burn, as you see there. But that barrel spawn was big for Flame. He's going to join his teammate there. You do see a new snipe. Fresh snipe is up. He trying to get a bounce shot. You know you can bounce it off there. And oh my! And we're going to see a push here. Now Flame's going to grab this new sniper. Look at Roy and Flame. They're picking up where they left off. Yeah, they really are. They haven't missed a beat. Roy hitting shots. Flame sword hitting shots. And I mean, I feel a little bit sorry for self proclaimed at the moment. You know, they came onto this stage. They've been putting in some huge performances online, but this is a different animal. I mean, the live uh -oh. event oh. place. That's this is where these guys grew it's up. This is where they made their name. But we may have spoken too soon there. It's a big double kill from gun type. He goes up with a mauler push S3, gets both players, Roy and Flame, down. Now they got snipe control with the sniper rifle here and only down by a few kills. So eight and a half minutes on the clock, everything to play for. We're gonna be watching the blue angles, watching top mid, bottom mid. Things are gonna slow down just a bit now. Yeah, I imagine that you can see blue and gold is where Flame and Sword are, uh, sorry, Flame Sword and Roy are at the moment. So green and bottom middle controlled here. My self-proclaimed gun type with a couple of bullets still left in this chamber. Just looking for a pick and a couple of kills go down in 2v2 scenario here, Andy. Things can change around very, very quickly. And if, if you're on the side here of Evader and Gun Type, just play this slow. You've got Snipe, lots of ammo here. Next camo's around 745. Great job to avoid the trade. Flame might get taken down here as well, which would really make this close. If Flame could stay alive, that's very important. We'll have to see. Top of grenades going to top gold here. You can see Gun Type. Oh, oh heels! Roy off. He wanted him to strike off that there. blue window. Looking towards a jump up now. Very confident. Across the oh board, my word! Ready for the jump! Gun, Gun type. type knows what he's doing you here! You animal! That is a disgusting shot predicting! 
Flames all about to jump up top goal, taking that angle. And now you're going to see him pushing across the bottom blue. Camo that camo is about to pop up as well. And you can see his teammate Invaders trying to move towards it. Flames all cutting off the angle. Roy gets the kill. And now gun type is in a 2v1 situation. Here we go. Still 13 to 10 in favor of Fl uh, Flame and Roy. And Roy gets the camo quite a bit late. Just now he grabs that camo. Ooh, oh. Get out of my face, Flame Sword. Puts him on his back. Roy has a 1v1 here. Stays alive smartly. No, though, but no, no, he no. doesn't. Gun, Gun type, type sees him coming up gold and takes him down. Gun type plays it so well. Backs up bottom middle to get the top gold lift angle. Now it's only a one kill game. Sniper going to be coming up in around 15 seconds as well. And now you can see Gun type and Evader self proclaim maybe looking to make a push on that new sniper rifle. One kill. Oh, the difference big. between these two players. Roy in a 1v1. And Roy gets floored by Gun type. Flames were able to get a kill top blue though there. So uh, game stays within one. Flamesword moving towards Sniper. I'm not sure if he managed to he does, pick he does that have one up. So he's yeah. got the fresh Sniper rifle now, Flamesword. It's the opportunity to maybe hit a nice headshot here. Give them the numerical advantage. Just looking at the jump up area, looking towards top gold. You can see Roy in such a sneaky position using all that veteran experience. Oh, he might peak barrels in a second to try to pick up that player. Let's see. Yes, Roy does peak barrels and he gets the kill. Amazing teamwork there, timing that perfectly. Here they go. Might also get the push across top middle here. Roy pushing in as well. But Great defensive grenade though from gun yeah. type. Big, big kill. He Ooh. knows he's going to be barrels, though. They maintain the two-kill lead here, keeping an eye on lift as well. You just heard the lift, so they know that that player may have came over. Flamesword now with the sniper rifle. Still a lot of ammo to work with here. That's the chance to maybe pick off Evader bottom middle. Repeats the angle, doesn't hit the headshot. Two players trapped bottom mid here for yeah, self they're both low. They're both low. Uh, the guys on Optic, Flame and Roy, just need to keep playing this thing. We're going to have a camo soon as well. So just play this nice and slow. Keep in mind, it was a little bit late, so about maybe 25-ish seconds until that comes up. Flamesword now controlling this camo area towards top gold. Evader taking down to no shields. Nice body shot. Roy gets the kill wow. on Evader as well. Instant clean up there. Roy great with communication. A great blue angle because that player, if that player stays alive bottom middle, it's a very different battle. And one thing we haven't talked about, these are probably two of the best communicators oh back in Halo 3. Flamesword and Roy, these guys were loud and proud and it's working for them right now. Camo very soon here. We're hearing from Wonder Boy in the back, so we'll keep an eye on that. The green push. Flame needs to watch out for those nades that are going to be coming in from all angles and stay alive here. Camo's up. You just saw it on screen. This is, now be an to camo. this is going to be an evader camo. Four kill game, five minutes to go. Really anything can happen here. Roy's going to have a battle in top blue. Roy pokes back out. Roy gets cleaned up. Flamesword gets a trade though on gun type. So now it's going to be evader trying to find Flamesword. Manages to pick him up. Now this is yeah, a game changer for these guys. Forward. Not only do they have an opportunity to extend a lead, they have the camo and they have the sniper rifle. Roy pushes right away across top middle. A bold push. This is, uh, this is risky. He needs to try to stay alive here. Oh, it's a big kill there for evader. Fantastic stuff from him. Gun type is going to stay back at blue. Evader's going to push up here. Oh, and there is that jump, oh. the S1 to S2 jump. If you're watching Halo 3 for the first time, that's not too easy to pull off. That's showing how many hours in the game these Jeez. guys have. Now it's just a one kill game as Roy gets taken down in blue. And Evader's here for a reason. His next snipe is in about 10 seconds or so. So only down by one and a great position to grab this sniper as well. Man, these two teams so close. Oh, this is coming right down to the wire. 25 kills is what we're playing to, of course, here. And this 2v2 Evader now with a grenade, but Flamesword, I believe, has the Mauler in yep. blue. Goes for the stick as well. You have to wonder, uh, you know, uh, Gun Type maybe regretting that push into blue there, meeting a Mauler in the face, and now it's a two kill game. Granted, that new snipe will be soon, and new camo uh, soon as well. Evader then trying to poke out, picks up this carbine. A couple of shots coming in across map, though. Forces him back, and now you're going to see Gun Type pushing up towards the top snipe, trying to steal that snipe. Right, oh, but look at the experience of Flamesword. Know that weapon's up. Roy he is challenges and pushes both players here. Roy is at snipe three. He's making the push down right now. Gun Type gets cleaned up by Roy. Sniper rifle in his hand. Evader's going to challenge. He gets bodied. Roy now pushing this kill. Can he finish it oh, off? Of course boy. he can. Roy is very much still our boy. Camo's going to be very soon. That's why you're going to see Flame cut across the Camo Plat right now. They have great angles here on any barrel spawners, any blue spawners. Flame. Getting hit by a couple of grenades, but look at this. He's got the mauler. He's got the, the only short-range weapon on this map to help him out if anyone pops around that corner. Such a classically sneaky position yep. to just Great drop shot. down on your opponent and as that camo comes up, get that melee, get the shot away, and finish that kill off. Curious exactly where this push is going to be. They're both in blue, by the way. We do see both of them in blue. Flame probably going to make a camo play here. We do see a blue top mid push on the other side as well. Flame does not know about it. Neither does Roy. He's about to meet them at snipe. Flame, though, a couple of extra shots there might help out Roy. If Ada gets taken down, it might have been a team grenade there coming in as Flamesword picks up that kill. Now only two kills to go. Oh, a blue rotate for and a Gaming perfect blue rotate now. Camo and Mauler and Sniper at blue, along with a five kill lead. Looking very, very good for Flame and Roy of Optic. We're now just hard scoping this top snipe area. Waiting for anyone to dare poke up. 
Flame Sword position with Camo as well. And he's spotting out player at bottom green here. He doesn't need to challenge him. I love this from Flame Sword getting into position. He's given so much information to Roy here. Comes in. Gun type's gonna get a Mauler. Gun type's gonna get a beat down. One more kill here to close this game out. Vader will eventually clean up, but of course, no room for error here. We'll stay with Roy now because he has the game winning shot in his hands. Do you dare challenge one of the greatest ever Halo 3 players when there's one kill on the line? I Roy. Sure, I sure don't. It's the reload. The moment. Vader and Guntype around the green and snipe area. Yep. So Roy's just looking for a pick and Guntype gets bodied. Yeah, Flame's not going to go. Not even going to challenge that angle. Just leave that player weak. Roy's got plenty of ammo. Just let him hit this pick. Or, or in worst case scenario, just let that time run all the way down. Vader's bottom middle and all. Oh. Roy almost finished it off. Gun type taken down to no shields. Here comes the push now from Optic. Flame Sword has the battle with Evader, gets the beat down. And Flame Sword and Roy take your game number one. We weren't sure how the veterans would fare against the new blood. And they take game number one. And in quite a comfortable fashion. Once they hit their groove, we saw them really take off. And I tell you what, some fantastic teamwork towards the end of that. Talked about it in that first game. These two guys, if you go back and watch all the VOD, all the previous tournaments, all the MLG tournaments these guys competed in, these two guys, their communication was, you know, apart from their individual skill, was the things that separated them. Flame Sword's such a good leader. Roy always screaming across yeah. the stage at his opponents. And the thing that really hit me straight away, if you want to know how much these guys want to win, go back and watch those first few kills and watch Flame Sword yeah. screaming across yeah. the stage. These guys want it. And I mean, like, like we heard on the desk, right? There's so many bragging rights on the line for this event. Uh, these guys, you know, how many tournaments have we seen Roy win, right? How many uh, amazing performances have we seen from Flame? Right now, I believe we just heard uh, Flame going plus six, 14 and eight there in that game. So big stuff from them. And I think if the guys on the other side, if uh, a Vader and Guntype are going to want to be able to, to win this next game on Narrows, they're going to need to make sure they do not get, you know, die one by one because exactly what they uh, let them do. Well, Flame Sword, there's the man on your screen. He had a big performance in our game number one. I mean, oh, holy throwback right now. That's Aaron Elam right next to him, and that's an unbearded optic beard. Some of the plays that these guys made. I mean, we're looking at Roy right now on Construct and just peeling everyone. This guy in his prime was an absolute monster. Arguably one of the most iconic shots in, a, oh. in Halo 3. The fact is 2018, we're still talking about it right now. Yep. I mean, one, of the it's most crazy. Like, one of the most iconic shots in Halo history, of course, yeah. uh, what he was able to do. And every time he comes back, he always performs as well. Map number two, gonna be Narrows. Oh, map number two is gonna be Narrows. We're gonna see snipes, we're gonna see rockets on this one, Andy. And Maul is gonna yep. be popped down top middle as well. And, uh, you know, Elamite was saying on the desk, he likes to go over the man cannon. I wonder if we're going to see too much of that. And Flame waiting to cannon. There he's going to get all the intel. He's going to find a player right on R2 going all the way to top middle. We'll see exactly. Roy does have snipe. Gun type is going to push him right away. And that's a big, big kill. I think they might have even left their sniper, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, they left their sniper and opted for the rocket push. That's a big, bold push to open the game. Yeah, and the thing is here, Roy's going to be trapped in a 2v1 situation potentially here. And Flame Sword, I'd like to see him to get into a position to maybe look over Roy, look over his shoulder, see if you can uh, keep him alive a little bit. But who needs nope. help? Roy's he's just doing it, taking care of everything himself back there. Wins a battle from the flag landing. Wins that in S1 and now stays. Oh, oh boy! Blimey. Scary rocket. Finally, he'll get taken down from the opposite power up, but neck and neck here, of course, off the break. Two to one, an early lead for the guys on Optic, but Flame doing his thing on the power up as well. So, uh, so excuse me, uh, uh, now tying up the game. Oh, great shots across map though, but Gun Type gets taken down, and that's the roar from the beard. Do not challenge me, son. I've still got it. Roy Scott calling in the airstrike here with the uh, man cannon, uh, with the rockets. A classic maneuver. He's going to stay alive there on the cannon landing, and they're going to play this a little bit slow. Narrows, of course, uh, a map that's going to play even slower at times than Guardian because of just how separated this map is. But when you do need to push and collapse on those kills in the lobbies, expect these players to fly real quick. Yeah, and Flamesaw's basically putting the game into Roy's hands now. And uh, Sorry, Roy's putting the game into Flamesaw's hand with that sniper rifle. He's just sitting down bottom mid, making sure that he's getting as many cutoffs as he can. Anyone who so, tries to push across top mid, bottom mid, yeah. Roy's got to cover. Let's walk through this. You have Roy right here sitting on S1, kind of R1. You also have Flame now sniping from the flag. So they're playing this nice and slow and really without any rush at all. They're waiting for their opponents, Evader and Gun Type, to make those mistakes. And so many Many great angles here on Narrows that we, we've seen throughout the years. You can here see the so push. many parts of the map from so many different angles. And now Flame Sword's going to be backing up. As you say, the push looks to be coming in. It's going to be Roy who picks up the kill in the lobby. Evader manages to trade it out, but Flame Sword, if he doesn't choke this one, should be able to clean up the kill on Evader. But great job from Evader there. But smart play again from Flame Sword here. Saw the respawner comes in, backs up.
up, keeps hold of the sniper rifle. Yeah, well done. He knew that that was going to be a tough battle when you're challenging that Mohawk and that uh, Fro. It's really not an easy battle to win, and you're coming up out of your lobby, and that cannon spawner would have been a threat as well. Uh, so now five to three, some great work from Roy to finish. Yeah, great communication again. Flamesaw putting those couple of extra shots onto that player top middle. Made Roy's, Roy's life so much more easy. Flamesaw and Roy are going to be working together. Gun type though, manages to get the kill, but who's there? Roy, of course he is, to finish off that kill. Now it's a 1v1 between Aveda and Roy. The flame may oh, be Roy! Good. Oh boy, Roy still, Flame does come in to help there, but Flame maybe going to wait a little bit to get that help, but still they're up seven to four and looking good here. See new snipes have dropped. Yeah, new snipers up as you can see, Roy. <laughs> what a scary thing to see. Even now, I see that yep. game attack. Roy jumping up and down with a sniper rifle and it puts the fear of God into me. Look at that, Roy. I mean, do you see how much he's watching his teammate's screen to see exactly where those spawners are? Then he cleans up the kill on Ken as well. I believe rockets may have dropped bottom middle, so the teams are going to focus on everything down there as well, but it's another early lead for Roy and Flame of Optic. Well, Flame and Roy are doing such a great job, and we talked about their communication. It's only right we jump into an Astro listening. Let's see how the comms are between the two legends. Well, turns out that we can't listen to them. I'd love to. Sorry about that, guys. Unfortunately, don't have the capability to listen to these two wonderful gentlemen right now, but a 10 to 4, I mean, the scorecard is saying more than enough for them. You can see Roy and Flame playing this one nice and slowly at the moment, and with 2v2, you can buy yourself this time. This is, when we say main stage discipline, think about it. Roy and Flame had a one kill lead, 3 to 2, and they're sitting backstage and back flag sniping with rockets sitting on, like, snipe one, R1. They're, doing, they're playing that way when they're up by one, and that disciplined play style is why they're now up here 10 to 4. It's amazing, isn't it? You know, these guys probably turned up this tournament. We're going to have a little bit of fun. You can never take the competitive spirit out of these two. As soon as they get a little bit deep in the tournament, things are going to change. They're playing for that W, but a good push comes in here. Gun type with control of the sniper for the first time really in this match here for Self-Proclaimed. Yep, don't count these guys out. They get some, a few quick kills. They're only down by five, seven and a half minutes on the clock. Last game, keep in mind, even though we did see a really strong finish from Flame and Roy, uh, we saw a really good uh, effort from the side of Self-Proclaimed. Interesting to see here, Roy does have the rockets as well. Yeah, he's, so yep, and power he's, weapons it, divided by the two teams, and there's a sniper rifle in the hands of Flame Sword as well. So gun type versus Flame Sword is the thing to watch. Here right comes now. the push. Let's see, Roy has now relocated with Flame over to Cannon Lobby. And we're going to see an airstrike here from Roy looking for anything top middle. Not able to connect there, not seeing too much. So he's going to just hide in this uh, cannon lobby. Up, oh, and he can get all the way back there. But look at the flame flank. Might even be able to pick up two here. He's all alone. We'll see if he can hit the shot. Evader, I think, is going to have his number. Oh, he does finish off the kill there. Almost got the stick away. Flame sword, though. Getting trades at this point when you have the lead is more than good enough. And now you're going to see some fancy potential players or trying to get out. Dodge, at least. Maybe aware that the respawners are there. Flame sword misses a couple of shots there. The long cannon being effective and just taking him away from that yep. straight line, just bending away to the to the left or the right. Great use of that man cannon there from Evader. Flamesword still there in the, in the cannon lobby with that snipe, now sitting on cannon side. 13 to 7 is our score. Flame does pick up a kill. Evader is caught on the opposite cannon lobby. One rocket left here for Guntide. Yeah, if Guntide doesn't hit this rocket, then he's uh, not got too much to work with as far as, you know, medium range weaponry. Doesn't have that BR. Only got the rockets and the sniper rifle to work with, so. Gonna have to hit some shots here if they want to get back into this one. The game's in your hand, Guntai. You can tell neither team wants to lose this. A lot of hanging out right around this area. The lobby, the cannon lobby, right around the, the Mohawk and the Fro. I really, so they can watch each other's back. And only when they get a first shot, or a first shot or a player weak, are they going to start to push up towards top mid. Yeah, Guntai probably aware that those rockets have just popped as well. So you can see Roy, Two he's snipers. down on L2 at the moment. Two snipers. It's, <laughs> it's not a nice place to be in. And tries to fire a rocket towards those freshly dropping rockets to maybe bait them out, see if a player's going to try and steal them away. But great Great play there, using those rockets as bait. And the bait was very, yep. very unfortunately taken there by yep. their opposition. And they're going up right now against Flame and Roy with snipers in hands and rockets as well, down 16 to seven. They are looking really strong here and they're gonna continue. This is gonna be quite a comeback. Five and a half minutes on the clock. I don't see how Roy and Flame can really let this go. Yeah, especially the way that they were playing with a one kill lead and oh my word, look at this. Flame Sword with a double kill. I heard sniper bullets flying. And Flame Sword looking for the triple! Yeah! Oh, he just, just missed, missed out it. momentarily, but Flame Sword, that is what we want to see here on the main stage. It's the killing spree. Only a fraction of a second away from a triple kill in a 2v2 catching that spawner. 
but also able to really hit a nice no scope for the first kill of that sequence. Roy now looking over his shoulder, Flamesword doing what he does best, just being annoying, being that bait. Jiggle poking around that mohawk, backs up now with that sniper rifle. They're saying, come to us, boys. We dare you to challenge us with these snipes. Little R1 push here, Evader trying to make something happen on the plasma, but Roy is just going to wisely back down, stay alive in lobby, like you said, force his opponents towards him. Flame, by the way, all the way down the power up, so not able to help here. 20 to 8, though, and Flame and Roy have really racked up quite a lead for themselves. Yeah, they really have. Four minutes, 20 left on the clock. It's going to have to be some perfect, almost picture perfect Halo coming in from Self Proclaimed if they want to get back into it. But a couple of kills here have gone their way. They've got the Rockets, they've got the Sniper, but they need to pick up these quick kills in succession. They need to pick up a couple of respawners, much in the way that R Flamesword managed to do earlier. Roy getting really sneaky there, trying to get a stick from Lobby as he came back. But he does go back towards Flamesword, who's top mid, with the Sniper as well. Roy is just hitting L1, R1 right now. Flamesword top middle just on that pocket. Guntark trying to peel him off, but Flamesword just not showing himself too much, not needing to give any kills away. And now I'm looking and both yep. players have backed up to the lobby and they've both got sniper rifles. Here goes Roy across the man cannon. Does get to hit there by that shot from the sniper and that is going to be him taken down. Evader doing a good job to listen for that man cannon, that audio prompt. And now he's going to be pushing Look across. Guntark pushing in for Roy. Ready for that spawn and the back flag. They still haven't cleaned it up and Roy doing a really nice job to try to Allow him really to pick up that kill. That's a question we've been asking for about 10 years. Yeah, that's true, and he's still here. <laughs> he's still alive. He's still being annoying, being an irritation, and he, he somehow managed to survive. And the last thing you want to do is give Roy an opportunity to get his shields back, because now he's pushing in behind these two players who are top mid, but they're trying to push onto Flamesword when they have this 2v1 advantage. Jeez. But look at that. Roy coming back around the corner, finishes off the kill. Gun type in front of him now. Drops the plasma grenade down onto R2. Gun type, I mean, that's an easy pick off for Roy. Doesn't get the finish. Rocket. I mean, he's absolutely fine with being trapped down in that power-up area. Rockets should be up as well. This should give an opportunity for Roy and Flame to pick up those if they happen to be passing by. But 21 to 11, a 10-kill lead for the veterans. Reminder as well, this is a best of three. So if they win this one, off the game in, they're going to be good to go. They're going to be moving into the next round. Rockets popping, as you can see. Guntite being caught off guard here. He should be taken down. There's a four from Roy. Evader now takes him down. Flamesword in the 1v1. Evader versus Flamesword. And Evader dares not challenge the beard. Look at that, that's kind of an opportunity for Flame to just grab those rockets now. Desperately try to stay alive. Might meet some resistance in this lobby, but he's actually going to get away with the rockets. 22 to 13 in the score. Two minutes 20 left on the clock. You almost feel that there's just not enough time left in the game here for self proclaimed to, to claw their way back into this one. The veteran ship, the veteran play of these two of airstrike. Making sure that they don't Woo! give anything away. And there's the airstrike. Oh, holy throwback. That's a classic. The thing is, you have to kind of hold the mic to you when you're when you're playing or the scream. You kind of have to hold the mic to your oh, mouth. Yeah, yeah. So you can get an airstrike. airstrike. It's a key. Calling an airstrike. I uh, got no visual. Over. I think that one kill to go. I here. think that rocket might land back in Halo 5 because it missed most of Halo 3. There missed most of Narrows. Onto gaming now. One kill away. Let's go for something. The double players, airstrike. The double over the man cannon. Nope. Gun time stays alive. There's only one thing to do in this situation, boys. Straight back in the cannon. Challenge again. Flamesword's going up top middle, but can't find Evader. Good shots across now, map. Now though. they're just getting reckless here. They're trying to finish those kills. Uh, they're they're getting just as reckless as we are here. They only have one more kill to go and do, doing anything they can to finish it here. Just one more and they'll close out the series. Things have slowed down a little bit now. I think they've tried. They've tried something flashy for us. We respect it, boys. We appreciate it. I do. I certainly do. On site though, with the sniper rifle. Evader with the sniper rifle as well, and we're looking across our screens at the moment, and surprise, surprise, Roy and Flame sword, they ain't moving. Nope, uh, Roy and Flame are just sitting backstage right now, uh, one minute, kind of towards back lobby. As you just hear, one minute left, so, uh, oh boy, great shot there from Evader. He's not going to go down without putting on a show. Roy's challenging Evader as well. Evader needs to push this kill, to be honest with you. Roy's going to pop around the corner and try and finish this one off. One shot, Roy is trying to... Finishes to off. Flamesword's coming up top mid, and Flamesword finished this this game off. 14 kills for Roy. Flamesword with 11. What a performance from the two legends of the game, and they progress into the next round. Smiles from Flame and Roy on their side of the stage. Of course, gotta feel good after so many years, so many tournaments of professional Halo 3. Here they are, back in 2018. They win their first match on the main stage tonight.
crazy, crazy stuff. We can see the stats on our screen and give it up for these guys. They're back. They're entertaining you. Halo 3 is back, ladies and gentlemen. The 2v2 showdown definitely entertaining us all. And uh, looking at the stats right now, we're looking at a positive three, I believe, for Roy. Yeah. On the other side of things, I think it was Flamesword with a plus four as well. Yeah. So, I mean, Flamesword. He's been the one who really was the was the standout performer in that game. I will say, I think they just look so comfortable. I think if you look at the sides of Evader and Guntype, look very talented players. You saw them hit some very crafty stuff. You saw Guntype earlier also hitting some key shots, right? Knowing that that top top gold angle to time the jump, right? These guys have played a lot of Halo 3. Not going to be the last we see of them, but Flame and Roy, they're looking strong. It's so weird, though, isn't it, to like think about these guys. They've been playing a little bit. We've seen Roy and Flame playing a little bit online, but to come back and just settle back down on that main stage and, you know, just to hit those kind of shots again, it's literally like they haven't been away. I mean, you could tell. You could see how Roy's even challenging bottom on Narrows, right? And just immediately ready to engage and then not backing down whatsoever. Also some great power weapon management from them in Narrows as well. Fantastic stuff. It was, a, it was an absolute pleasure to cast that, ladies and gentlemen. It was a dream of mine to do. Uh, I mean, Roy and Flamesword, they progressed, but for now, it's back to you guys on the desk. Thank you so much, gentlemen. What an incredible series that was. Uh, and welcome back to the desk, everybody. Now, if uh, Carl's looking a little bit flustered, it's not because he was running back from the toilet and he had about <laughs> two seconds to get here. It's because that series was just so amazing to see some of the old school guys getting together and they still have what it takes. Clutch, I'm going to come to you first so Elamite can get his breath back. Uh, <laughs> how did you find that series? I mean, Roy is our boy still in 2018. He's got his shot still. It's pretty incredible to see him hit some of the shots that, I mean, I'm, I guess I'm used to seeing Roy hit that, but I wasn't really sure he was going to be able to play like that. And surprisingly, he went off. I mean, Flame was right behind him. I mean, the most surprising thing that I saw out of those two, though, was their teamwork. They never really teamed. I mean, they had, what was it, a, a tournament in Halo... Reach, was it? At, uh, after after 2011, Roy and Flame, you guys team for a Halo Reach tournament, I believe. Oh, yeah, the, the final, I think it was after the, uh, the the last Halo Reach at MLG, and then we had an AGL event, and we replaced, I believe it was Royal 2 with Roy, me, Snakebite, and oh. uh, Ian, so that was another just nasty team, and uh, thankfully there were still all the other uh, decent teams that came out to that, so that, that was a fun event. So we definitely have chemistry. I think the first time me and Roy ever teamed in a 2v2 or even a 4v4 environment was the Winter Wonderland back in the day. I believe, I believe we had a conversation and you told Roy, yo, this dude can shoot on host. And everyone hated Halo 3 host. Oh, and yeah. He's like, yo, Mike, you want host for the 4v4 like little tournament we were throwing? I was like, I'll take it, man. I got to practice. Now, Flames, so welcome to the desk. It's lovely Appreciate to have it. you up here. How does it feel to be back? You're playing Halo 3 again. You're on the main stage. You've got an amazing crowd behind you guys. And I did see you getting a little bit excited on the stage. Yeah, people are happy that you are back. How does it feel? Oh, it's incredible. I think I've, what? stopped competitive Halo for two, three years maybe, so to be back in my most, or the game that I thought I was best at, Halo 2, hands down, my favorite Halo of all time, Halo 3, my best one, Halo Reach, I won tournaments in, but to be able to do this with Roy, who Roy's just known for his VR in Halo 3, and like, I believe I heard Wes say, it, Clutch say it in the beginning of the pre-thing, pre-game, like having that confidence of one person, you know that most people are going to back down from him, to just be able to move freely as I was moving, man canning, doing whatever I wanted, it just, it's just awesome. And, you know, I've got to take my hat off. If I did have one on, I would. Uh, but, you know, to self-proclaim, because they are the matchmaking gods, and we said they're so good online. Uh, but they did go on that stage, and they really did, you know, give you a good run. Uh, how did you feel playing against them? I think uh, me and Roy kept saying it online. Like, the whole point of us playing online was kind of to get our shots back or moving back. And so for the most part, when we were playing online, we were just holding forward. I felt, in my opinion, I told him, you know, when it comes to tournament time, like, we know you got to play every life like it's 49-49, and that's exactly what we did. Um, game one was good. I felt like we definitely uh, pulled out in the stretch. In that game, it was going back and forth, I felt. I feel like they're really good on that map because they do hit some ridiculous snipes. Um, and they just they also move around really good uh, in, in pairs, too. But in 2v2, I feel like once you get that lead, like as you guys saw us do in hiding and sitting back, and, I mean, that just shows how much we also respect them because online they were just hitting ridiculous snipes. And so we knew that when we were in those positions, we're like, we can't be showing our faces. Like, I think there was one time in Guardian, I challenged Guntype uh, S2. Like, you already saw me, and I should have never popped back out, but I was like, all right, let's, let's test him on land, and he hit it. So we respect him for the snipers, um, but when it comes to teamwork, I mean, we're veterans, you know? This is what we do. I love it, and it is so great to see you back. And thank you so much for coming on the desk. It's an absolute Appreciate it. pleasure. Uh, you guys will go through to the tournament, so best of luck going through that as well, and hopefully we will see you lift that trophy at the end of Sunday. Would be incredible. Now, guys, we are going to take a quick break. 
But when we get back, we have the rest of today's Halo 3 2v2 showdown. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back right after this. Join now and get your first month for $1. Our duty as soldiers is to protect humanity, whatever the cost. I will continue my campaign against the humans. That's not going to happen. Chief! If he leaves the Covenant fleet to Earth, they won't stand a chance. You have to stop them. Go AFK. Be right back. Guys, you are not gonna. Never mind.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the HCS 2018 Finals. We are here at DreamHack Atlanta, and you are just in time for the Halo 3 2v2 showdown. My name is Lottie Van Prague, and I'm going to be hosting the desk for the remainder of this evening and tomorrow for Championship Sunday. I'm not alone here. I'm actually with two lovely gentlemen who I have been roasting all day, but it's Thanks. only in a bit of fun, so it's okay. You're still my friends. Uh, I'm with Clutch, and I'm with Elamite too. Guys, we've just seen what an incredible series that was. Uh, we've had our old school legends, and we've had the guys who are incredible online. And they really did put up a performance for us today. The audience were loving it. Everyone was loving it. We had a Roy is our boy chant going on. I mean, what an incredible experience it is to have Halo 3 back in the house. I, I'm sure you guys couldn't be, couldn't be happier. Yeah, it's amazing to just, it's that nostalgic feeling every time you see, you saw Roy get a headshot with a snipe or something, and the Spartan just starts doing a backflip. It's, it, there's no feeling like that that I have personally for a video game. I mean, I can't wait for this next series, though. I mean, every single one I'm excited for. All the teams that have made it this far, and wait to, once we get to the grudge matches, once we get to the OG versus OG, uh, what I really, really want to see is Mason Cobb versus Justin Brown, the Roy versus Neighbor. I just cannot wait. I pray that that matchup happens. Now, let's talk about you guys for a second because you guys have incredible backgrounds i mean clutch for you 2009 national champ uh, with believe the hype second place in 2011 with the national championships as well i mean you guys have had some serious titles under your belt i mean you elamite as well 2008 national championship if i went on i wouldn't have enough breath in my lungs because you have won numerous amounts of championships here you guys really are the top dogs now looking at this how seriously did you take halo back in the day did you practice as much as these guys absolutely I mean I think I was one of the guys that was forced to play every single like more than everybody I think I was one of the people that was always on I played for eight hours a day I was one of the snake fights of the world one of the APGs of the world that really had to dedicate everything I had to this to be at the top to compete with the likes of straight rip and the likes of triggers down it took I had to put twice as much time as the majority Maybe of some of the pros as much time really three West. times as much oh yeah for what yeah that was great. I love that. <laughs> Loving that from you. <laughs> but you were taking it seriously. You were a pro. Absolutely. I mean, that's one of the things I pride myself is I never, like, looked back and was like, man, if I could dedicate, if I had been that much more dedicated, then where would my Halo career have been? I mean, there's no question marks that I left everything on the line and I, I accomplished what I accomplished and I... Leave it at that. Now, Ilma, I just quickly want to ask you a question as well. If you had to 2v2 with anybody, would you choose somebody that you've previously had success with on a team? Or would you choose a close friend? You know, Flamesword and Roy, they're close friends, but they were making moves today on stage. Who would you choose? Uh, well, I mean, I've had a couple like 2v2 duos uh, over the years. Uh, Mason and I were one for a while. Uh, Legit and I played a lot. Roy and I actually competed together a heck of a lot. Strongside and I came up together uh, in Halo 2 and, and we're competing all the time. So I, I've been blessed enough to actually get to team with a lot of those guys. Um, the, the only people I didn't team with that I really wanted to back in the day are like the Ogres uh, and Nated, really, because he, he was also phenomenal in, in Halo 3. Well, I would definitely choose if I had to. Elamite. <laughs> oh, I love you really, Clutch. Don't worry about it. Let's take a look at what we've got coming up for the next series. Uh, we've got another two amazing teams on our hands. We've got GMS and we've got One Time. Uh, there we go. Those are our 2v2s for the day. Guys, what do you make of this series? What can we expect? Something like the last one? You guys were looking forward to that last series. This is my semifinals that I'm looking forward to because I have relationships with both these two teams. I mean, I played so much Halo 3, MCC, Money 8 with both of these two teams. And these guys have a lot of games played against each other. They know exactly what the other one's going to do. So there's going to be a lot of chess matches being played inside of these 2v2 games. And really, they're very evenly matched. We have a lot of individual skill on both sides. It's really going to come out. Who's going to play on the main stage under the lights today? That is very true. There's a lot of lights on that main stage, but you are very right. Uh, Elamite, now, looking at these two teams yourself, what is your opinion on them? Who, who are you faring against each other? Because it is 2v2, it's a different style right now that we're playing and seeing. Uh, who is going to come up clutch? I mean, the Money 8s are so much different, or, you know, so different than those 2v2, so I, I almost want to divert to Wes on, on what his opinion is and, and, and where he sees those teams falling, because uh, it can go any different way. I mean, uh, what we just saw from Roy and Flamesword is that uh, it doesn't matter how long you've been playing, 
you can come out and absolutely dominate it and take over games, and that's exactly what I remember. I think everybody's lucky that Pistola's not competing in this because he was the X Factor, the undisputed new number one player. I had the best record, but I, I'm not even going to try to put myself in his category and how good he was. But between these guys here, uh, Wes, i got to go over to you on, on your opinion here. I'll say there's two players to watch in these 2v2s when they have Sniper Fantasy on one side, Master Fear on the other. They're both unbelievable with it. I mean, these guys would be able to compete with the likes of Hysteria, Fear itself, and whatnot if they were playing back in the day online at least. We're going to have to see if they can bring it to the main stage. I'm kind of torn here. It's tough for me to pick a team, but my boys, Master Fear and Tusk, I mean, we made some money together online against Fate, Fantasy and Gabriel, <laughs> so I'm going to have to go with my boys here. Master Fear and Tusk, you better show up. I love that. I'm going to go opposite then. You're going to go opposite? Yeah, just, okay. Just, just to go against Wes. Interesting. Interesting. I asked, I asked Elamite who he'd be teaming with if he had to uh, in this 2v2, uh, but Clutch, I would, I'd be interested to know because you were telling me uh, how you you know, talking a big game as usual, <laughs> how you would love to, to be actually be in this tournament for 2v2. So who would you choose as your partner in crime? There's two people I would ever play 2v2 in this tournament with and I would not play with anyone else it's Heinz and Cloud and Cloud was my duo for so long we had so much success together and Richie and I never really got the team other than a couple events but and we had a little success but we played so much together we both think alike we both rotate around the map we're always on the same page kind of like what you hear from Splice as far as knowing what the other person's going to do before they do it and that's how I always felt whenever I did play with Richie or Cloud I mean those two guys we all saw Halo in a similar limelight, and I feel like I would need somebody like that. I would have to have confidence in somebody like that if I was planning on taking this championship. Well, gentlemen, I'm so excited uh, to see exactly how these two teams fare because this is a little bit before my time. I'm going to be totally honest. Uh, as much as I love Halo 3 and I've, got, I've learned to love this game as well, I'm really excited to see some of these guys coming back uh, and showing us exactly what they've got and if they do still have it. Uh, with these two teams, if you, you, know, if you had to choose a particular favorite, just one player to look out for for everybody in the audience and people at home, uh, who, who'd be interested in seeing and watching this guy's moves, who would you choose? Master Fear. Master Fear has unbelievable individual skill it's going to stick out in this series it's going to be the difference if this kid gets a snipe this series could be over fast who would you choose in the mic i'm gonna go fantasy uh he, he's been a, incredible online i've matched up with him uh, you know dozens of times and, and and i'm super glad that he's getting an opportunity to showcase the hard work he's put into this game now we've got the series now in front of us and of course we have the same as last time it's guardian narrows and heretic gentlemen a favor of yours on there at all if, is there something that you would probably be looking forward to if you were one of these yeah, guys all three all three. Loving all three. Oh, Phenomenal match. You're a national champion. Okay, we get it. Guardian, by far. Guardian's the 2v2 map. All That's the true. other ones we have to throw in to create diversity, but Guardian, if you win that Guardian game, you are a better 2v2 team. That speaks volume to me. And you go back to the Halo 2, I mean, it was Lockout, so Guardian you know, was essentially a remake of Lockout uh, and carried over to Halo 3 days. So, yeah, I mean, I agree with Wes. The other maps are phenomenal. Uh, excellent in 4v4, but Guardi Guardian's the, the deciding. What are some of the back history to these guys that you are choosing as well as some of the players to watch out for? Uh, you know, why are they the best and why are they here competing? Well, I think it's a lot of it's just the time they put in since everyone else, you know, took time off. We grinded it out. Sometimes we would be so burnt out after an event because, like, like Wes said, you know, you want to leave it all on the line. You want to go out without any regrets here. And uh, during the course of history, you know, with, uh, from Halo Reach on, you had these guys consistently stick with Halo 3. And, and I'm really hoping it, it shows through here and we see one of them make it all the way to the finals. What about you, Clutch? What yeah, the think? time that all four of these players has put in, really, they, deserve, they all four deserve to be here in this semifinals because of the time they put in. And it, I hope it pays off for both of them. I mean, I know one's got to win, one's got to lose, but it's good to see that They've all made it this far in the 2v2 bracket. I'm very excited to get this going, guys. If you had to predict a scoreline right now, I know it's best of three, so it sometimes can be a short run, as we saw last series as well. Uh, but do you think that these guys will make it a close one? Absolutely. I see this going to the third game. I mean, like I've been saying, both these teams are so evenly matched. I expect close games up until the end and a close game three. What about you, Mike? Yeah, I, I completely agree. I'm going to go opposite of West, but uh, I, I think we're both in agreement that this is going to be a split decision and go to game three. And what is the longevity of some of these teams that we're seeing as well? You know, these guys go way back, but how long do they go back? When do they first start? <laughs> You're going to have to ask them. I don't think I know the answer to that one, but I've seen them for a while. I know Gabriel's been playing at least since Halo 3. I know Fan I actually played Fantasy in a local in Nashville uh, just randomly back in 2009. It was right when I first wow. started becoming a pro. And 
Fantasy actually had his like older brother talking smack to me behind me uh, <laughs> during the whole series, so I, I would never forget that. But I do remember him kind of sticking out to me and showing some individual skill. Well, gentlemen, we are just about ready to go, and I cannot wait to get into this series. I'm going to throw it over to your casters. One of them is a national treasure, a global icon. It's Gaskin and an imposter. Over to you. Thank you so much, Lottie. Welcome, everyone. It's time to get hyped. It's time to get loud. I can't believe I'm getting to do this, people. I get to commentate a game that I have loved since I was a kid. Halo 3, I'm about to cry. Dan, hold me. I, I, I will Here hold we you. Here we go. We'll embrace. Right. Mate, Let's I, go. I was a kid when I started playing Halo 3. It's what made my career in Halo. I'm so excited. And we've got four players who have been grinding out Halo 3 on the Master Chief Collection. They have been enjoying this game, and they've got a chance to prove that they are two of the best players on this game here today. All right, well, here we go. And they're just going to lift right over to that sniper tower there and force him all the way back. Immediately, though, you're going to get that first kill out of there. And Woo! already we're just seeing some spikes thrown down there, Dan. Yeah, and you just got to make sure you get that early statement in right from the get-go. Let them know who's boss. Make sure you don't allow them to get away with a sniper rifle. We see straight away Master Fear wants to get this camouflage, but good oh. grenades and good game sense to make sure that's not an easy grab. Gabriel's going to get the beat down there. Camo's going to be in his hands as well. And, you know, I, I, we were talking about this in the back a little bit, right, in that last game with Roy and, and, and Flame Sword, that there, there are a lot of people out there enjoying some Halo 3. And for a lot of these players, I don't think that they could have thought that that was a possibility to play Halo 3 in front of this crowd. If I'm nervous back here as a caster, I cannot even imagine what these players are feeling right now as they take this stage to compete. You, you have to be a little nervous here. There's no way that you're not just a teensy bit nervous. I man. mean, I heard what Flamesword said. He was saying, I'm more than happy to go up against any of these kids on a loud environment on a main stage. I've been here, they haven't. And you saw the difference in that last game, but now it's time for some oh. of these players to make their name. Yeah, that was actually a good push into the Snipe Tower. And really, the battle has been going on over there so much. Four to three in the current score line here. Two, these are four players that have simply just not stopped playing Halo 3 this whole time, putting in the work. Now on the main stage, and the action is going to slow down. We have a player by blue. And they're just trying to feel each other out here, seeing what the push is going to be now, Dan. And of course, in 2v2, because it's only to 25, you have got to be a little bit more hesitant with your yes. pushes. Master Fury is kind of hovering around this sniper area because it should be up in around 45 seconds. Camo should be a similar time, to be honest. So it's, it's which you choose. Are you more of a camouflage kind of player, more of a sniper kind of player? Both can influence the game very differently. Tied matchup here. Still early on. Master Fear playing around by green, just not really trying to, to get a little too ambitious. And his teammate comes off to spawn, but that was, you gotta be careful, right? Not to not to give up too many dumb deaths, right? Give them too many of those garbage kills, but the push comes through. Nice play there as they're able to go and get that gold lift. Really nice push there from Master Fear as well. Of course, he baits the player out, uses the noise of the lift, and then tells his teammate, push now. They're gonna be looking at me. Master Fear he gets the camouflage. Oh. oh, he tried to stay alive. He ducked as well. Uh, but decent shots coming out from all of these guys. I'm in incredibly impressed with their aim. And you heard that sniper was just grabbed over by S3. And Gabriel now is going to be on the move. About half shield pushes right in, able to take out one player. Master Fear, another one. That's going to be a double kill. Locking that one down. Sniper in hand, and he's going to have eyes, but just got to be careful. And it's Halo 3. You need eyes and you need ears. So much is about awareness in this game. And the sniper skill is absolutely incredible from these guys as well. I cannot stress enough how impressive a headshot is in Halo 3. You've got to be aware that someone could be pushing from behind you. They could be jumping up from Gold 1 to Gold 2. But Gabriel, he's got a good sense of knowing that they're over at that sniper tower. And that's why he's kind of just hovering around, hoping someone walks into that crosshair. You never quite know where the push is going to come. But these players have been playing not only Halo 3, but also against each other, right? Like, these are guys that are just matching up against one another in matchmaking time and time again. I'm sure there's a lot of uh, a lot of debts to settle here, as it is very different when it comes to LAN. Halo 3 is one of those games where I've seen players achieve so much online, and then it comes to LAN and it all falls to pieces. And, and, and that is the fear, right? You, you, you talked a big game, you felt like that this was going to be your moment, and then you, you arrive and it all falls apart. Master Fear, though, having to bail out of that one. He is going to have some help as well, but they're going to be pinned inside of here. 
Luckily for them, they will have a sniper with four shots in it. Make that three. Does he connect with that one? Yes, he does. Nice shot there, taking out Fantasy. Another player looking to push up. He doesn't have the help, though. So you're just going to have to peel back for the time being. Camouflage should be coming up in about 10 seconds as well. So you can see one time here are moving their way over just to make sure they have a good angle on it. But every player here knows that camouflage is coming up. As long as they're timing it successfully, of course, no coaches here in the 2v2. So they will be timing it themselves. One thing I've noticed, which is very different in this game as to the prior semi-final Golden Boy, is they're not looking at each other's screens Ooh. as much as the two ex-pros of Flamesword, etc. I saw, I saw a little much. glimmer from Master Fear, just, just, just a tad. Oh yeah, they're, they're but, but, I, I, but you're right though, right? Because these players, they've been playing this game online for such a long time, whereas Roy and Flamesword pretty much exclusively played on the main stage at MLG events all across the country. So yes, there, there is that inherent like expertise that they have of knowing, okay, let me go ahead and look at my teammate. Let me see where he is and see how can I coordinate this push. But they're gonna, they're gonna get into that groove little by little. New Sniper is going to be picked up, but Tusk is going to be dealt with quickly there. Yeah, you got to make sure you take that Sniper down as soon as you can. Of course, you do get de-scoped if you get shot with a Sniper Rifle. Very different to Halo 5 that we've been seeing earlier on today. Oh, yeah, and body shot. a nice body shot to Gabriel. Uh, but he wasn't able to finish up the kill in the mid, and you have a player that's going to be jumping up. I think that was a stick. He does get the stick on to Tusk, but there is going to be a trade there. Good news for them, though. Red team up 14-11 currently. little tussle over there and Gabriel didn't really have any vision on it so he couldn't really support to keep his teammate alive knows where that player is going to be located and a beautiful nade but you know you're not going to really be able to push that advantage because you're not going to have the knowledge that you landed the nade right and that's the other thing too you're just getting the visual cue that that this person's one shot there's no uh there's no hit marker right to tell you that this person's one shot as I said, you've got to use your eyes and your ears just that little bit extra when we go back to Halo 3. I'm glad the Mauler was picked up. I was wondering when it was start going to make a bit more nice of an appearance. Shot. There's some decent shots coming out from Gabriel here. And they're making this move over here because they want to start playing for that camo. Get that prime positioning. See those nades starting to sail on through as well. If a player tries to jump, maybe Gabriel can just beam him as he jumps through, but he's actually just going to bail out of that one. I think it's a just... A sensible play. It's quite a defensive play, keeping that sniper rifle, just getting away from the camouflage. Yep. And this works out quite nicely because he was able to get a better angle, go for those nerdy angles that we all remember. I'm sure many a, a man or woman in the crowd could go back and say, oh, I could stand anywhere on Guardian and I would know exactly the angles I can snipe someone from. Master Fear with this camouflage needs to make the play. They're only two kills down. Fantasy's going to be right in front of him. He's just going to have to go ahead and throw that nade out. Sends that player sailing through the air, and his squad member is going to be right behind. Should be able to clean that one up, and that is going to tie this match up 16-16. Yeah, one time doing well here. They've got a sniper rifle in their hands, and another sniper should be spawning as well shortly. Look at these angles, man. Just waiting. Just predicting. And it's horrible when you pop out of blue, and you know someone's got a sniper in green as well, because it's so difficult to hit those BR shots. Of course, it's oh. a lot more comfortable on land when those shots do connect. Nice nade sailing him up in the sky, but Tusk is actually going to have to bail. And he, oh, man, for a moment he was going to get hit by the splash of that nade, but instead he's going to get cleaned up by the battle rifle. Fantasy, though, right by S3 now. Sniper is going to be up, and he gets it, and he's out of there. Yeah, you bail quickly. You don't want to give any opportunity for grenades to be backed off walls and take you down, even get you down to low shields to allow a push to happen. Elsewhere, Gabriel gets a kill with a mauler as well. He's doing work. He's more than happy to take that push. You can see Fantasy just trying to line this one up, but he's also very conscious that someone could be spawning gold as well. I think that was an accident. Either that or it was a very a good prediction. Or it was just the most, like, big brain play you could possibly imagine. Hoping to bank a shot off the wall. <laughs> yeah, right. That would have been crazy. This next camo should be coming up in a couple seconds here. And that's what Fantasy's looking out for. They also have two snipes as well. Oh, gets that player one shot and here it goes. Camo's gonna be up and it is gonna be grabbed. Tusk runs out of there. Is there any connection from his teammate? I don't quite think so, but he sees it. Sees him flickering. He's gonna chase it down, but Master Fear is gonna be Woo! there for the assistance and that's gonna be the assassination. Still though, they maintain the lead 19-17, but they have the camo. 
can one time do this. And that was such a brave play by Tusk as well, just diving on that camouflage, even knowing there was two sniper rifles potentially looking at him. And this is a chance for one time to get straight back into this game if he can find this kill on Gabriel. But Gabriel's gonna stick his head down, make it harder to hit that head by just showing the back. And they do keep the one kill advantage. Two minutes and 40 seconds left in this game. We got a player, bottom mid. Oh boy, this is where the this is where the tension starts to build up for all four of these players. The action, it's close. This has been a hotly contested game, even matchup. And I think we'll see one more sniper spawn before the end of the game as well, probably in about 20 to 30 seconds. And that could swing the game in the favor of either of these players. There will also be another camouflage, of course. We saw how much it's just impacted the play in the last minute or so one time have that camouflage advantage at the moment but because of this man cannon right there it means you can so quickly push over to that camouflage even though you do leave yourself slightly vulnerable because you are just floating in the air fantasy playing back here everyone's at this point you're, you're just playing for the powers you're playing for the power weapons right that's what this is all about that's why the action has slowed down if anyone's like well why aren't they pushing i want to see i want to see some brs firing well it's because you got to be smarter than that. You have to think about your approaches in Halo 3. If you kind of find yourself in a bad situation, you don't have many options to get out of there. But a big assassination onto Master Fear as Gabriel finds a player just pinned. And that is going to be tossed with the kill there. And that will be the red member down. So still within one. Oh, just when you think that an opportunity is going to open up. It was, come right back. it was such a smart play from Gabriel as well. He saw that Sniper was up. He knew they'd be looking at the Sniper Rifle, looking at Fantasy. Fantasy baited it. And Tusk has got another camouflage as well. Oh. This is his second camouflage. Dear. How? One if that was me, it would have stuck onto my big toe. That's not fair. They hear him lifting up. Gabriel's going to be one shot. He has a teammate there. He's able to take one out. Oh, the mauler. But they're able. No, he runs away. Did he get him? He's low. He's looking around. Bails out, still one kill. Oh my word, we got 41 seconds left in this game, Gaskin. That no scope was absolutely huge from Fantasy, and he's been able to escape with a sniper rifle as well. You can see he's scouting around, he's looking for spawns. Needs oh. to be careful here, needs to stay alive with only 30 seconds left. But he's being pushed from both angles. He got pushed, he got pushed, but he's able to trade out. He's able to trade out, and his teammate gets the 23rd kill. 18 seconds remaining. And one time, it looked like they were going to win it one time, but not today. Seconds Game for one is going to go to GMS. In five seconds, nothing that they can do, but what a conclusion to that Guardian matchup. Game and quite rightly, a round of applause as well from the audience, because that was a treat. The power up control, the snipe control, the risks that people took to get that camouflage, to get those sniper rifles. I can just imagine... That was parts. a clutch trade over a grass man. Well, the fact he went round to root and then he was able to get that beat yeah. down was absolutely insane. He was on no shields being pushed by two players. To get away with that, incredible. Wow. Oh, this is so fun. <laughs> You got chills? I'm, I'm, having, I'm, I'm having the time of my life, man. I'm like a kid in a candy store. And I don't know if you can tell, but I definitely don't need more candy. No, you know? that's but, a bad but idea. But I'm, 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 I'm eating it up right now, baby. You know what I'm saying? I'm consuming it all, the Halo 3 goodness. You know what I mean, Papi? It's been I good. Know. It's so good. It's, uh, it's bringing back, I'm sure, so much memories for everyone watching around the world, yeah. whether it's on Twitch, Mixer, or here live in the audience at DreamHack Atlanta. And I think we're just getting started in this series as well, because I think there is more to offer from these four players, because that one was so, so close. Now, an interesting little bit here. I just want to throw it out. So the reason why the game's ending is because they started so quickly. They were, they were so ready to get into game two that they just joined lobby and they were in. They were, they were gone. I remember uh, when I was uh, commentating MCC tournaments back in H2A, took a little bit longer to get into the game. So, you know, respect these players. And the, the beautiful thing about Halo 3 MCC, we've got full on real LAN, local yes. area network. And it's just beautiful yes, seeing the shots connect. I mean, I remember playing online back in the day and it was just, yeah, no, especially, you'd shoot things. It especially because you're playing out of Europe, you know, and you guys basically have wooden internet. We do, we did back then. Yeah. If, if a person had fiber, we would be like, hey, cut, like, come into my lobby, host, please. Host for me. I want to be able to shoot things. <laughs> 
don't want to be lagging across the map. Guys have like a, a DSL, you know, just a, a phone. I had AOL phone dial up. AOL, yes. You'd start Halo and be, and then you're ready to go. Oh, that's a, I, we dated ourselves, buddy. Just saying. We, we, we quite dated ourselves. Here we go. Time to jump into some Narrows fun here. And we got a, a, an interesting matchup because as it currently stands, GMS coming out clutch at the end there one time. They got to shake themselves out of that one. It was such a close game. And right now, they're up 2-0. to zero, And they have some sniper control up top. And they're just wiping them away. That's four. And this map is all about sniper control. Narrows, of course, long Ooh. and, funnily enough, very narrow. There is going to be a lot of angles to get those snipe shots. A lot of potential for spawn uh, killing as well. We saw uh, Flamesword almost get a triple kill in the previous semi-final. Because if you can get two down, as long oh. as you look at those spawns and you're hitting your shots, don't you're in for a your head. Don't poke your head. You don't want to do that. 6-0, Dan. 6-0. 6-0 and you're spawning and just staring at sniper rifles as well. Going across the man cannon is brave, but no shot is going to be hit today. That wasn't a straight montage. You were going, oh, he gets the stick, though. He gets the stick, keeps this one pretty far away from the red team, GMS. Even when they get a kill, one is answered right back, so they're still maintaining that lead. Such a strong start for one time. You know, GMS, they can turn this around quite quickly. They've got the top middle control now. If they can get some sniper rifles in their back pockets a little bit later on, quite easy to turn these games around. They're just hovering around this R3 and L3 or R1 and L1, depending on which side you are. Just hoping to be able to pick out a couple of players. Looking around here, and this is where the players were, were, were located currently, right? Opting actually to push out mid, so they, they kind of gave up that top mid control. And the thing that's beautiful, or what's beautiful about Halo 3, and still is, is the amount of jumps that are available to maneuver your way around that's the map. That's true. To surprise your opponent, get behind them. So you've got to be so aware of where you're pushing. A couple seconds here, you're going to have those sniper rifles in play. And you're not going to want to take those cheeky jumps there, Dan, or else you're going to be walking away without a face. Yeah, I think 25, both snipers are going to be up. So in about 10 seconds, and there's still that six kill lead from those original sniper rifles that came mm -hmm. up at the start of the game. They were only able to get one to the, the the two that one time were able to bring back in. So they're right. They're they're keeping this one far away from GMS, not letting them get comfortable at all with this sniper rifle. Look for Tusk to do what they did, do what he did, I should say, at the start of this game. He sees Master Fear, and Master Fear is handling business, and no one's trying to expose themselves. Fantasy, wisely enough, not pushing forward here because he knew that they were going to have eyes on him. And sniper rifle players were so important during Halo 3 as well, especially in maps like Narrows, where there are two snipers needed to get snipe offs. Can't quite connect Ooh. that headshot onto Gabriel, though. And he had the gun in hand. He was not able to drop it. There was just too much he was getting fired at. And at that moment, you kind of have to make a play. He had the sniper hoping that he can get that no-scope headshot. Just was not to be. Now GMS gained the sniper. They have the rockets, but you don't want to do that. You don't want to shoot the floor. Good enough, though. Still it, able to get at least one. It certainly works. I'll allow it. And then, whoa, somehow Wait, gets what, the what? stick as well. I mean, sticky grenades have always been something that bewilder me since the start of Halo 3. Yeah, whenever I would toss one, it would go straight to Australia, hit Miles right in the face. <laughs> but never the person I'm, I'm playing against. All right, there goes Tusk in front. He's going to be one shot. Gabriel just wisely enough playing around the mid, not exposing. But oh, he did get the trade, though, but his teammate was there for the follow-up. So they're still going to have that top mid waiting for the spawns to come here is Master Fear. But GMS, they've closed this gap a little bit. Three kills is not that significant when it is only first to 25, and that's some decent BR shots from Fantasy as well. Closing this one up now to just two. They've got to be very aware, though, of where this sniper rifle is. And this is a credit to GMS for coming back like this, yeah. right? They were down by five kills at one point, and that lead just kept on building. But you have this, this team that, based on what we saw in that Guardian game, they're able to dig deep. They're able to bring it back when they need to. One time, though, applying the pressure. Fantasy won't be able to get away from that one as he's picked off. And they're just looking for the spawns. Player's going to challenge top mid. Quick work out of him as Gabriel gets the hands. And one of the snipers should be coming up about 
6.45, 6.55. I think one of the other snipers might be dirtied as well. Uh, that meaning that someone picked it up as it was spawning. So the time changes ever so slightly and it's difficult to track unless you are that player or a coach stood behind them. Which they don't have. Which they do not have, though. No. They do not have the coaches. And coaches were such a huge part of Halo 3 as well. But when you talk about 2v2, though, right, you, you should be able to have a more of a conversation as you're playing the game. Less clutter in the comms. Or at least that's the theory. Well, there's less objective to worry about. The objective in a 2v2 is power-up timing. Mm -hmm. Is power weapon timing. Of course, a coach would help, but yeah, you'd like to think that these players know how to do it. would be a little excessive for a 2v2. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'll take any help I can get, GB. I... Preach to the choir, baby. And, and, and Clutch is up there. He'll probably tell you. Oh! Oh! What was that? The double kill from Fantasy. Oh. <laughs> oh. Holy. Keep it going, God. Papa. Keep it going. Oh, man. What a play from Fantasy. GMS, they were down. They were down by six. And now Fantasy is really turning up and the Rockets are spawning as well. Drops that sniper rifle, it's running out of bullets. Does see Tusk coming around that corner and Master Fear. I think he got both of those players down to no shields. He needs to be communicating that with his teammates ASAP. Can you, can you imagine Fantasy right now? He's on the main stage here in Atlanta playing Halo 3, something that I'm sure he thought he would never do. He pulls off some incredible plays to bring his team back into the game. That is literally the dream. That body went flying, but it's okay because they still have the lead. After one time had such a dominant performance at the beginning of this game. I don't know what's more impressive, the fact that he hit that incredible double kill or the fact that his hands weren't shaking afterwards. Oh, the amount of adrenaline that must be pumping through the bodies of these players now. Their chance to shine on a main stage in front of hundreds, thousands of people watching. Definitely and, thousands. And, and one time has to be struggling here, right? Because they they have this lead. You, you, you're comfortable at this point. And now you see that this is it, what you built up at the beginning. It, it's gone now, it doesn't matter anymore. You're fighting from the back foot. Oh, and Tusk. He didn't line it up, and that was gonna be a double kill. Another double kill for Fantasy. This kid is disgusting. Look at the players jumping off spawn though. They knew how vulnerable they were off the spawn there. If they had not jumped off spawn, they might have been hit by that headshot. But recognizing that Fantasy had that sniper rifle, so important. If they hadn't, they might have fallen even further behind. And of course now with a four kill lead for GMS after a pretty impressive display on Guardian as well. They're looking to try and rack up this series. Three kills remaining for GMS to tie this one up. He has his teammate there as well. He had to make the call out and Gabriel was able to get the kill on to Master Fear. That was the 23rd. They're looking around. Fantasy, he's hungry. Wants some headshots, but he's gonna have to bail out of this one popped up from behind. But the sniper's smart. gonna go out of this one as yeah. well, Dan. Very smart to throw the sniper rifle off the map. Don't allow them an easy way back into the game. Make sure they have to wait for another one to spawn, perhaps. But one time, they are slowly creeping their way They're back into They're not out of it. They're not out of it, Dan. They just need to be smart about this, work together, talk with one another, and not give up any dumb deaths. One thing I've noticed from one time is they're very brave players. They are not scared to make a push that leaves them vulnerable. They're confident in their shooting ability, confident in their knowledge of how to jump and maneuver around the map. And they're only two down, and it is only three minutes left as well. So they do still have plenty of time to work with. Three minutes and 2v2 is actually quite a lot of time. Oh, feels like an eternity. And Fantasy just, oh man. And that's what I was saying, like, I don't know why he pushed up and that's gonna do it. GMS are gonna lock it up. Good job out of the red team to secure that victory there. And, you know, they, they pushed up as a solo against two. Like, that's just not something you want to do on Narrows. His teammate was on the other side of the map. It's very unfortunate that that was the case. But still, GMS with that victory, hot off of the, the, the back of Fantasy. Just, he's living in a different world, bro. <laughs> I mean, Fantasy went 14 and 10. Like, it's so important to pick up those big kills. Clutch was saying it on the desk. He's the man you want to be watching when a sniper rifle comes into play. Narrows was literally where he was born and bred, it yeah. seems. Despite the fact they were down by, what, six kills at one point, the fact they were able to bring that one back, absolutely incredible. And Fantasy, well, yeah. he's my MVP. You know, uh, hey, I'll give Wes his credit. You know, he is a national champion. 
So he kind of sort of knows a thing or two about good Halo player, good Halo 3 player. So I'll give him, I'll give him the credit where credit is due. I just want to let you know this was a blast. I had such a good time. I freaking love this community. Thank you so much. This was, this was amazing. Uh, I'm, I'm like actually on the verge of tears here. So I'm just, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna stop talking. You stop talking. I'll give you a high five and I'll throw this one over to Lottie on the desk. <laughs> Thank you so much, gents. Honestly, it's, it's a pleasure having these guys. I just want to quickly pose to Golden Boy. Why did you choose Clutch to just big up there? Well, because I like... chose Fantasy. What are you guys doing back there? I am, I, am I crazy? You chose Fantasy because I told you to <laughs> yeah, Right. You chose Master Fear. I chose <laughs> Fantasy. You and Golden Boy. You don't even know that there's a Z I don't even fantasy. know what they're doing back there. I, I don't even know. Yeah, you don't know what you're doing In all seriousness, though, absolutely amazing to have Golden Boy back up there casting. Uh, I have missed his voice. Now we're getting straight into the replays here. To be honest, I'm gonna, I'm gonna honestly focus on fantasy here. He was fantastic. Uh, he got that extremely important trade at uh, bottom green, and he solidified the game for them. Clutch, looking at his play there, I mean, you can't fault it. Unbelievable. I mean, I've been playing with a, a lot with fantasy online, and I didn't know if he was gonna be able to bring it to the tournament on land at an event, but he was able to do it. He was, his snipe was still on. I mean, so many disgusting things. I mean, that double kill right there, so solidified the win. It really changed the outcome of that game. But we cannot take away Fantasy's partner, what he was able to do the entire time. And that would be Gabriel. Thank you for joining us. Appreciate you. He's taking my job now. Look at that. He's taking my <laughs> job. I cannot believe it. Gabriel, welcome to the desk. Lovely to have you. Congratulations. You guys you. were making moves up there. Uh, what did it feel like to be on that stage playing in front of this incredible crowd uh, and playing Halo 3 as well? Uh, amazing. Halo 3 on main stage, it's, it's a classic. Like, I can't even explain it. Uh, I mean, you guys played outstanding. And of course, Fantasy had an incredible game as well. Do you feed off that, off each other? Uh, when you're doing amazing things in game, you guys are like, well, that was pretty sick. Let's just keep going. Yes, of course. Uh, anytime he does a sick play, I get hyped and vice versa. So yeah. Now, you know this incredible gentleman on uh, your left here, yes. apparently. So you're good friends. Now, um, how, how do you know each other? Have you teamed before? No, we never teamed. Uh, he just plays with us, and we've been in the scene a long time, so we just kind of know each other. So he's just tagging along, basically. <laughs> he's feeding off your glory. He likes to play with us, and you know, we teach us some stuff. his glory. <laughs> <laughs> um, gents, obviously we've got Gabriel up here. Any questions for this young man? I mean, I want to know what your reaction was when Fantasy hit that 360 no scope. I, no sc I literally that. just saw it right now uh, on the replay. And then I was like, ooh, like I didn't even know. He <laughs> didn't say anything. The top play so far, the thing, about, the thing about that is, is like, what you just say, Gabe, that, I mean, that's what, like, you're, I love playing with you because, like, I already know, you have no idea what he just did. You just know he got a double kill, and I, immediately you go, nice, JR. Yes. Yes. And I mean, like, <laughs> JR hearing that, I already know JR's like, oh, I'm about to go off now. Like, and that just created that momentum that really changed the outcome of that game. That's what you want in a teammate. You want that teammate that's going to hype you up. Gabe does it better than anybody, and, and I really do think that that's one of the good qualities you and JR have is being able to feed off each other's vibes. Oh, yeah. And I want to know as well, Gabriel, how do you feel that Wes predicted you to lose that series? I mean, I wow. can't blame him. They're a really good team. They did beat us in the online qualifier, but, you know, it's all about today. It's he, all about the land. He knows that's like my squad when I have to play against GMS in fours. I got to go with Master Fear and Tusk and Windsor at home. I know you're at home watching. <laughs> that's, those are like my guys, and I have to play against the likes of Gabriel and, and Fantasy and all that GMS squad that we have to take down every now and then. <laughs> Uh, tell us what the GMS needs here uh, as well, for anyone at home watching. So for anyone at home watching, it's Golden Modem Squad. It's just an online team that's never been to LAN, but now we finally got the chance. Boom, man, you've got a victory on LAN, so congratulations, that's incredible. Uh, now, like you said, you were playing against one time, you got respect for them, uh, because in that last Narrows, you know, at one point, we did see them ahead, uh, and they just lost their momentum, and you guys were able to climb that back up. Uh, you know, have you got a lot of respect for this team, and how did you feel playing against them? I uh, definitely have a lot of respect for them. Uh, we play them literally every day. Um, they're staying with us at our Airbnb, and we're, we've been playing this whole time, so we know what they're capable of. Uh, they've, they've actually beat us in more uh, games, like, this weekend, so that's the first time we actually beat them. A risk. Do you reckon they're going to be salty about that? They've been they've been beating you this whole wet time, and the second it actually means something on the stage, you're just like, well, sorry, guys. Yeah, well, I mean, it was really close, so we knew it could go either way. So, you know, they have another chance. And what would it mean to you if you get to go out and you play like the likes of Roy and Flamesword or Neighbor, Best Man? What, what, what would that mean to you now after growing up watching those guys? I, it, it's honestly crazy because I remember playing Halo 3 back in 09 and I did look up to these guys. So to play them, it'd be awesome. I wish all the pros could play. 
Mm. How long have you guys been practicing for this moment? Because you must have known for a little while that you're going to be playing in the showdown. Uh, how much practice has gone into this? And was it was it nice to pick up the controller and pick up that old school game again? Oh, of course. Halo 3 is always a good a good game to play. Uh, we practice. It's, it's weird. We've always played Halo 3, so... You know, we, just, we kind of stayed in shape. It's kind of your thing. Yeah. Loving it. Well, Gabriel, thank you so much for joining us here on the desk, and congratulations. We'll see you a bit later on in the competition. Guys, that's all we've got time for on the desk right now, but we have a couple more series to get through this evening, so go grab a cup of tea and a cup of coffee. We've got a little bit further to go. I'll see you in just a bit. Captain Keys is placing the Pillar of Autumn in Combat Alert Alpha. It's payback time, ODST. Move out! Those forces are moving in on the Pillar of Autumn right now. Let's help push them back, Raymond. Reports are saying the Covenant let something loose on the ring. Something dangerous. Weapons ready, Raven.
S1S, the best value in games and entertainment. We are back and we are here for the HCS 2018 Finals. I am so excited to be bringing you the Halo 3 2v2 showdown. I just want to hear a little something from the audience, guys. Are you excited for the remainder of the evening? We've still got an amazing match coming up right now. Uh, I want to hear some Halo 3 chants going on, guys, so I'm just going to put it on you there. Uh, we have some incredible stuff going on. We've got series to get through. We've got Optic versus GMS coming up. I'm Lottie Van Prague, and I'm bringing you the desk with Clutch and Elamite. Gentlemen, what a series we've got on our hands. We've just seen GMS taking down one time, and we've also seen our OG players, our legends of the game as well. We've got Flamesword and Roy up there on the main stage right now to play at the next level. Now, guys, who are you favoring for this? I mean, this is getting more and more difficult as the, as the series are going on, uh, because we've just seen incredible things from Fantasy, incredible things from Gabriel. These guys are gelling together, but the unstoppable force that is Flamesword and Roy together as a team. I mean, this must be a tricky one for both of you. I mean, it definitely is because they were playing extremely well. Had Fantasy, in case anyone's wondering, yes, I chose Fantasy, not Clutch, to be the player to watch in that series with the double kill 360 no scope. Uh, or 180 no scope, excuse me. Or actually, was it 360? I don't even know. It was insane, Were you even though. watching the series? I was watching the series clutch because some of us predicted it correctly, others did not. But in this upcoming one, you know, I gotta go with gotta go with Optic Gaming. I mean, Flame Sword and Roy, can you ever really bet against them? I'm fine with you betting on them because it's the old school versus the new school. And guess what? GMS is gonna take this series. Fantasy's gonna go off. Gabriel's gonna back him up like he always does. They're already hyped from the last series. They're still warmed up. It's going to be fun it's to watch. It's going to be good. I'm excited, actually. I mean, Clutch, do you remember the last time that you went with your mates? You didn't actually predict right. I'm so telling just saying, you. Just saying. It's, it's the time that these guys have put in is about to pay off. This is why they played it. They knew they'd be playing against some people like Roy and Flame. They, they knew it. Now, the, Roy and Flame are going to have a lot more teamwork than what we just saw Tusk and Master Fear have. Roy and Flame were very good at bait and switching, communicating, playing it slow. How are Gabriel and Fantasy going to get used to this pace? The, the difference in pace change between the two teams that, they're about, that they just played and they're about to play is unbelievably different. How are they going to be able to still come out with a win? Now, that is a question that they have to fucking, they have to figure out. Well, we nearly had a slip up there, but no problem at all there, Clutch. Uh, so we have got these two incredible gentlemen. We had Gabriel on the desk earlier on. <laughs> Stop laughing. Don't look at me. We had, <laughs> we had Gabriel on the desk earlier on, and he was saying how excited he is to play with these two incredible legends of the game. Uh, it's something he's been looking forward to, but when it comes down to it, is the pressure too much playing against two icons of the game? Some two guys that you have looked at and looked up to as you're going through your Halo career and something you'd love to do, I would be terrified if that's me personally. Uh, I mean, I don't think the pressure's too much, but the excitement might be too much because this is something that it just would not happen without the support of 343 and, and the ability to come here to DreamHack and have it happen because, I mean, Rory retired. He has not been to an event in quite some time. Neighbor, best man, those guys as well. These guys, uh, you know, Gabriel Fantasy, who've been grinding Halo 3, they have not come, to, as far as I can remember, to a Halo 5 event. Like, this is their opportunity. This is why they're here. They're sharing an Airbnb. And, I mean, I remember the days where we had 15 people in a hotel room, <laughs> You know, sleeping on the floor and uh, just the, the motivation and, and the drive and, and the dedication all these guys have, it's really, truly amazing. Clutch, looking at Flamesword and Roy now, uh, really quickly, they are going to be looking at these two guys, seeing what they did the last series. Uh, those guys really performed well. Uh, are they going to be feeling a little bit of the pressure now? Just just a tad bit, going against, uh, going against, of course, Fantasy and Gabriel. I don't think Roy and Flame are feeling too much pressure. I mean, they've played in multiple finals before, each individually. I mean, they've been on that stage hundreds of times, I feel. There's 
probably no pressure. I feel like they're coming into the series thinking that they're probably the underdogs. Yeah, they have a legacy to defend, but they, they're very aware of the amount of time Gabriel and Fantasy have spent practicing for this moment. Amazing. Well, gentlemen, it's about time we get into the game. And I'm going to throw it down to your wonderful, legendary casters who have been in this game for a while and they know their stuff. It's Walshi and Sims. I don't know about game, being in this game a while. He's certainly been in this a hell of a lot longer than I have. Atlanta, how are you doing, people? Are you having some fun? Yeah, sounds pretty good. Sounds pretty good, Dave. Halo 3. It's been a while. It has. It's, uh, it's... Man, I mean, I've never cast this game before in my entire life. And to be sitting here with a champion like yourself, sorry to pick you up, but this is kind of like, for me, a little bit of a, a boy's dream back in the day watching MLG VOD on a Friday night in my pajamas, curled up, stealing my uh, my dad's cat, so to speak, to be able to go on and watch it. But that's a different story altogether. Dave, we're back on the pit. Game one is underway. This is the winner bracket final. Yeah, winner's bracket finals. I was interested to see what kind of start these players and teams would have going into pit 2v2 because obviously in 4v4 is like you split up your resources, you sent someone to sniper, someone towards overshield, one or two towards rockets. But right here is quite interesting how they essentially sent three of the four players towards rocket and one towards OS. So we've got Flame Sword with Sniper, Roy with Rockets on the opposing side, Fantasy Sniper Rifle of himself, just eyeing up Green Door, he's down on S1. Gabriel's actually pushing Long Haul on this side. Roy's beginning uh, probably prepared for this one, so we'll see how it does. Come yeah. through, oh, he didn't have to go for the Batwack, decided to go for the shots, but he does manage to shut him down instantly. Now to be aware of where Flame Sword will be peeking up from. He gets the tag, doesn't get the kill. He, in fact, he does, he jumps up, but he needs to be aware of it. Snipes him off the back as well, they're pushing this one through. He manages to land the shot onto Flame Sword. Yeah, and this is a tough situation. Fancy, Fancy losing that sniper. That's going to be both snipers now going in the hands of Optic Gaming. It's going to be incredibly valuable here. One thing also on the pit, uh, you can actually garner some different information across the map uh, when people are going through green or through needler. So you know on what people call the training where Flame Sword is currently, where uh, where Roy's teammate is, there's these little like target men that go up and down. And what a flank here from Fantasy, catching Roy off guard. But um, the one part I was going to bring up was here on pit, uh, you'll see sometimes those little flaps go up where it's a little target person going up. And that means there's somebody within his vicinity. It says, you know, it's arguably about 20 meters or so. And so you can basically assume if someone spawned in, uh, in Needler or if someone's close to green or on training before you even fully scope out the area. Quick scope goes in. So there is that little brute. So right they're going to know where exactly where they are. Again, you, with, you spoke about it perfectly, Dave, within the vicinity. Waste the rocket, unfortunately. He was one shot. Flame sock goes down. Player pushing outside green. That rocket does hit the side. Does take a little bit of shield off. He's there to pick it up. Flame sock dips down low on S1. Doesn't realize his second player is actually with him, so he does pick up the kill. It is a bit of a trade off there as he might get this one up. Roy spawns right next to him. OS will have popped 47. It's there. And he does pick it up, but he is flashing as well as he does that. Yep, gonna get it while well flashing, run away. So that one's gonna essentially be uh, semi-burned. You you essentially have to wait for your shields to come back in order for that to fully kick into effect in Halo 3. Snipers have just come up, two players down on runway. Initial hand goes down, finish him off, picks him up. Second player is there to at least dip down. There's the communication between them both. I like this greedy play from Roy. He wants to get over towards this snipe hut. It's such a strong position. One, you can get that sniper uh, rifle. Secondly, when you get on top of that hut, there's really only one viable way they can take, and that's the back ramp where they have filtered through a small, small area, especially when you have someone perched up on bridge. It's. You've no idea how satisfying it is here just watching Halo 3 sniper action. It's absolutely, truly incredible. Rocket should be up any second. Goes for the neuroscope. He's all damaged. At least those grenades will have pushed him back there. Oh. Ops to go in for it. He gets the kill. He gets the aggression as well. Rocket comes flying out of nowhere. Chases him down. Hits the back wall. Sniper dead. One thing that's such an interesting engagement where those players are at right now, where Flame Sword and Roy were just located, is players start to, started to come up with the most specific names possible once you got around those corners because people were able to bob and weave and go way too often. So you'd hear people call like, over at cut, over at curb, over at box. And uh, the way I kind of described it when we were going through it as a strategy, as a team, and as players was, you should be able to close your eyes and hear your teammates call outs and be able to picture exactly where that player is running from back and forth so you can cut off players when they're in those tricky angles. 
Pat as he knows, he needs to be exactly very, very careful as there are two players that are going to be directly in front of him. He saw where Flame Sword, excuse me, Flame Sword came off the back over on the needle side. OS should be up around 43, so you'd look to see both of them setting up for this one. Graeber will be able to get an angle on it and where he is, Dave. Yeah, and Fancy is doing this right. Fancy should be staying over here towards hut side. Obviously, you want to get that short lift where you can go on the lift, you can crouch, and you won't get as high going up that lift. Um, but the main reason Fancy wanted to stay there was so when a member of Optic Gaming filtered through, uh, through Snipe Courtyard, they wouldn't know which way to face. They wouldn't know, do they face towards Overshield and fight Gabriel, or do they face towards Court and fight Fantasy? So it's uh, it would have put them in a tricky situation if Fantasy was able to stay alive. Gabriel picks up the kill, picks up the second one as well. That's the always burnt and gone, but it did its job. I don't know, pick up two. His teammate will be taking his own battle of himself. Sees the player coming just down. And also knows that player is not going back closer towards Needler's side because yeah. you didn't see that training figure go up. Flank will ensure. Just come for his head there, Roy. Inside flag. Flame puts enough damage into him to find Roy to be able to pick that one up. So Sniper will drop up on S3. Working together, being allowed. I'm not entirely sure where his teammate will be spawning. Uh, new Sniper should also be up, so I'm interested to see if Roy's going to drop down or is going to be yeah, content with this upper there. location while he still has a few bolts and almost nearly predict that one. Roy's just going to wait this one out. There's really not much he can do in this situation except for one player overexposing himself. He needs Flame Sword in order to secure one of these kills. I mean, that was the whole point of holding Banana, right? He was just looking at the angle because so he could try and see where we were going to go from. He called it perfectly, Sniper up. Bullet comes flying from the opposing side. Grab that ammo. There it is. Job done. Move back up. Take another peek. In fact, he's not. He's seeing if the push comes from driveway. Gotta be careful, man. These. Yep, they're gonna start going for some of those tricky so. angles. But now that Flame has a pick, I can see Roy getting a little aggressive. They may want to see what kind of play they can make to get the sniper out of their hands. They now know where it's located. However, Fantasy does not know where Roy is, and that's always the sniper advantage. The thing is that OS is coming up at 43, and the fact that they have full control of this, they can just kind of hold this bit down. Rockets have just spawned, I'm hearing, in the background. Flame's already there looking for him. There's the tank, there's the kill. Now we can run back. The backwax there. Roy potentially can get the OS here. He almost got the insta as well. So that's a, that's a term that I coined early in Halo 3, where Ooh. you can actually uh, place down one plasma grenade, and if you throw the second before the first explosion, it will explode that second plasma grenade and send it flying towards your opponent and instantly kill them if it's within the right vicinity. Hyper-aggressive with the Rockets. He does push forward onto their green, and he falls. Gives up the rockets. There's flame. There's the drill from the floor. He's there's out. A, there's a, a semi insta right there. Yeah. The first plasma was down there. The second one's explosion was what helped push that over the edge for the damage to finish off that partially overshielded player. Heavy sniper in the back of Gabriel. That's a lot of bullets and ammunition I saw on the side. Jumps off the back of the banana. Rockets do go down, so that's a good trade off. But look at all them goodies up on top of that yellow platform. You got rockets, you got snipe. Flames gonna be calling this one off. Gabriel's getting aggressive. He knows gonna be spawning down there. The grenade may have done enough damage just to be able to give himself a little bit of breathing room, but they are still applying this pressure, Dave. Yeah, and right now, Flames in a really difficult position. He has to either isolate a one-on-one, -on -one, which he does against Gabriel, or he had to have fought that player on training and then pushed back over towards Roy, where his cover was at. One rocket in the tube here for Roy. Four kill deficit, but they only He's need not two. gonna fall for that. That's Roy. He's gotten back smack there hundreds of times back in the day. It's not gonna happen one more time on main stage. Yeah, but unfortunately he goes through green and his end will be met. There's a rocket on the floor for himself. Grenade comes from the back of Flame Sword. A voice death just for all but a second. Gabriel and Fantasy, 15 and 10. They take game number one here in this best of three winner bracket finals. And that's a that's a tough one when you get behind there in pit. Uh, it didn't feel like Roy and Flame were able to get much going uh, as far as they would get a kill or two, but they weren't able to like really secure any sort of lockdown. Like they weren't able to get a sniper on top of bridge or on top of opposing snipe hut to kill any spawn kills over on Needler's side or towards Mauler's side or anything like that. But uh, yeah, just very well played there from Fancy and Gabriel. I mean, it wasn't as if, you know, the scoreline was completely eradicated and they fell totally behind. It was still a, a, a decent and close game, to be honest with you. But again, I mean, Fantasy and Gabriel, their aggression is, it's incredible. It's, it's great to see. It's, you know, this is kind of the players of old that we're talking about. When you're talking about this level, all right, we're seeing legends on, on one side, but on the other ones, it comes down to how much time you're putting into the game. If you, if you grind it 24-7, Dave, this is, you know, 
the proof's in the pudding. Yeah, yeah. But also, at the same time, too, you got to consider probably the majority of uh, the time that you've had in uh, Halo 3 is 4v4s for, yeah. for Roy and for Flame, obviously. Obviously, uh, they've done a decent amount of preparation in, in twos for this, and they've done their own amount of twos in the past. But, uh, yeah, obviously, I would, I would expect Fancy and Gabriel to have more hours of 2v2 Halo 3 clocked in. I think one of the uh, one of the harder things in, in 2v2 for, for Halo 3 in itself is the spawn system. I, don't quote me on this, but I think it still uses the 4v4 spawn system, so you spawn very relatively close to your partner. <laughs> and the amount of times you'll be shooting one and all of a sudden coming off the respawn, you have to fight another battle that comes from the on side. Keeping control of it and, and keeping together rather than taking individual battles and running off on your own, teamwork in 2v2 is absolutely godsend. Yeah, I know a little bit of the spawn system in here. Actually, uh, when I went back, back to school uh, four years ago in my D Discrete Structures math class, I won an award for uh, doing a design or a rework on the Halo 3 spawn system using die graphs, using um, uh, one of the things that we learned within our math class. And um, yeah, I basically talked about how you could have it unidirectionally affect spawn. So when someone would be in Mauler and die there, that would um, negatively affect the Needler spawn. Or Whereas if, uh, like this is the pit example, or uh, when someone would die in Needler, it wouldn't affect the molar spawn since someone wouldn't have an angle there. And you know, I did a whole project on that, and I was happy I won an award on that when I was in school, so that's kind of cool. Professor Walsh. <laughs> I bet that's why you got your little thing on your wall now, have you? You got the frame and everything. Uh, big initial kill, then coming off the back, wins the battle against Flame Sword. This will be a relatively quieter, I'd say quieter one, probably a less aggressive one. Saying that, Gabriel fancies chance with this sniper does step up. Down to no shields. Bullets keep on coming from blue, at least keep him tagged up. And here comes the aggression. Royal probably get called out now. S3 does drop down. That should be a cleanup. But Roy's answering this one back. Nope. Two of them push top mid. Those lights are deceivingly secure if you don't have those multiple angles. So as soon as that player got back down over on snipe side, a player in top center has a near equal fight against someone over on green side. The the real crux or the real downside to being top center is you have so many make, so many angles against you. So here in twos, if you can eliminate one of those angles, you can just push across top center, across to green, and win that fight. Roy having a fight of his own, finds one. The little bump jump should have come through, but unfortunately it does not land it. They kind of caught each other off guard a little bit. If he's clever, unless Flame has took it, sniper rifle should be still down here. Flame might, oh, actually it is. That's a pretty heavy loaded sniper as well. Fair amount of bullets. Goes for the shot on S2. Doesn't land it. Bullets and grenades are coming through. That's S3 patrol. You gotta be careful where this player's disappeared to now. Obviously, he's run off elbow, but where's he gonna reappear? Both of them are there side by side. One's S1. There's the elbow as well. So you have to be careful of this push that might come from green. Yeah, but they just got his first pick. They know this other player's over on elbow. Roy has him one shot. So I believe us. Oh, oh, oh. New just came up as well. So this could be Flame Sword acquiring a second snipe in a moment. I wanna say that was that should have been come up uh, fairly soon. So we'll have to find out where that was at. Uh, but yeah, a bit of catch him off guard here. They're really nice one. Yep. Roy has the flank. It's one body shot on Gabriel, and this is going to be a finish off. Eight to four lead here for Roy and Flames. Now, the only reason that he got that is because he held his trigger for all but a second. He did have camo. He let them walk away. He finished fired that shot. They didn't know he's there. He waits for a second, then drops down, catches them off guard, facing away. Both of them down. Now, two snipers in the hands here. One with Flames Sword, one with Roy. Yeah, and Roy's is pretty much about gone. So, right now, he's just going to have to try to support. Uh, uh, or Flamesword is going to have to try to support Roy over there, but he's not in much of a threat of losing that power weapon. And this is actually a really tough angle in many cases to support your teammate over on Camel. It's more of their responsibility to not take as much damage as possible. You don't want to put yourself in a situation where that player is able to round the corner and just get that one shot finish on you, which I felt like Roy maybe was just a little over aggressive and didn't understand if both players were top gold, but that is all right. He is uh, one of the best Halo 3 players and he's allowed to mistake every now and then. I mean, Christ. With Roy, it's raw. We say, oh, all right, Mike. Steps up when he gets requested for help, puts a bullet in him. We talk about Roy, potentially the greatest shot in Halo 3 of all time, maybe? Uh, yeah, I don't think that's too hard to argue against uh, as far as, like, PR shot-wise. Yeah. Um, I was, I, honestly, early on in Halo 3, I wasn't aware of how good his shot was until I teamed with him, to be yeah. honest. Uh, right after we had the big final boss split, um, Roy and Lunch and Instinct called me and they're like, we want you on the team. And I was like, I was like ah, I'm not sure. Like, I, I want to, you know, maybe explore options. Like, honestly, you should team with us. We're really good. And 
they talked me into it, and uh, I ended up teaming with Roy Lunch and uh, brought Soviet on the squad because I saw a lot of promise in him. And we had a incredible run that season. I mean, we we had a couple second place finishes, a third place or so. Uh, I don't recall all the finishes. We didn't have any victories, which would have been great. But uh, regardless, I remember doing some warm ups against Roy and having this feeling. I was like, all right, he four shots every time, and he gets the first shot off faster than me. How do I beat something like that? You know, like I would even try jumping, try doing anything I can to dodge every single time. It's just like he hits every shot, and it's just insane. Come on then, Dev. Who's your uh, who's your favorite twins that you've teamed with? Who's the favorite twins? Uh, I mean, I would say. Let's get nostalgic here. You can't take anything away from Team with Ogres. I mean, we teamed for something like four or five years, I think, for, you know, from 2004 to 2008, uh, something like that. So it was, uh, we had a lot of great years together. Yep, I mean, you can't, that's something we'll remember forever. But, um, you know, I would say I'm a bit closer when it comes to, like, friend-wise now with, like, you know, Roy and Lunch. Uh, they, they're just such great people. Both, you know, both sets of wins are great, great people, so. So you dodged the question. Okay. Oh, absolutely dodged it, man. <laughs> <laughs> what a cop out. Fresh snipers up. Gabriel will reload his armor at least. Be able to get a heavy snipe. No scope beat down. Easy kill for him. Grenades are obviously going to come from bottom mid S1. He'll There's jump. an insta attempt. Yeah. Insta attempt. Instas were my favorite thing to come out of Halo 3. Like, it was one of the most incredible feelings to just deflect those nades off each other, hit someone around the corner. I literally would go in some uh, MLG matchmaking level 50 games without shooting and, you know, still rack up like double digit kills, just throwing plasma grenades and still winning those team games uh, as not shooting. Um, plasma grenades were severely underrated, I would say, at even a uh -huh. top level play. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised to see even Roy hit a few of them this this series. Because uh, if we go to game three, it's going to be heretic. And that's going to be starting plasma grenades. Can we just appreciate how he actually kind of read that one like a book? He knew the player might yep. try and do the jump down to West Ward. Unfortunately, missed it and landed it. Uh, didn't land it, so he fell off. But the Mauler was already there. And he was ready to receive that battle if he had to. Flames on now has like a battle of his own over by Camo. He's going to bait this one just for a second. Gets the beat down. Snipe comes through. Oopsie. Roy hit him then? Yeah, I believe Roy hit him by accident. And that's a, that's a tough one. I mean, based on that situation with their flame, I think was clearly trying to just get that melee as fast as possible, get the back smack so the player didn't get the camel. Uh, in retrospect, there's obviously Dude. a couple other options where it's like, all right, just go for the, the two shot beat down and guarantee the kill or get to the camel faster. But that's all in retrospect. I mean, uh, I think his his mind was in the right spot. He was baiting the camel. He, he went for that play and it just didn't work out. Oh, well. Camo delayed for a second as he does. He threw that grenade, gave away his position. Now he needs to jump up on this ledge or needs to jump to front snipe too. I feel like he's kind of leaving himself vulnerable just oh. going that same angle. Two players versus one. Easy kill there. Again, kind of what you said, Davey. I mean, he wandered around green, which gave him time a little bit, and they didn't realize where he was, but he gave away position with that grenade as he did approach up elbow. Roy now gets given a sniper rifle. Let's see what else he can do with this. And here's like, once again, the traditional setup when you're on snipe side is you're going to hold snipe and you're gonna hold green. Reason being is anyone pushing out from blue or from uh, or from top gold, they're gonna get collapsed on from multiple angles. Like I said before, the reason that green is even powerful is because you have that second angle from snipe. Now expect these players to jump towards top center. He lost all the power of green because there's no longer a player at snipe, and here they come. Gabriel can just jump out in top center with no fear. I mean, it's a textbook that we're almost gonna say, got a nice setup here having one of green over at snipe, but it all relies on flame sword staying alive. From the back of that, grenade goes down. We'll see if he can get this kill. You'd expect that player now to be moving from S3. He's getting ready for it. He does get the grenade kill, which is fantastic. Now the back in this vision, but where the hell is that sniper? Uh, they, th they saw it earlier at green. So right here, it just looks like they're gonna collapse from top center and uh, from snipe side. And look at that, just Spidey sense coming out of Flame Sword. He realized that Oops. Gabriel was the spawner coming out from green and pushing elbow side. A player would not push elbow side unless they had some secondary angle to come from. So uh, he knew that Fantasy had escaped since he still didn't see Fantasy, so he knew a flank had to be about. Uh, especially in 2v2, just being aware of who you killed last and when you see that player or where you see them. It gives you a decent indication of where his teammate might be coming from or more than where they might have gone to. Almost a fresh camo here with Roy. Sniper did go off the map and hearing in my headphones. We'll look for the next respawn to be coming up very soon. 21 to 16. Four more kills here to push this game number three. Roy still patrolling flames so bang up as its side. They can watch bottom mid. I didn't realize that both of these players are in blue now. The, the, the issue is... They're waiting out this camo. They, yeah, they, they realize they, the they have to make both the pushes here, don't they? Yeah, they have to make the pushes, but at this point, like, you don't want to go 10 or 20 seconds early. Uh, you, 
obviously you have to make pushes at some point, so make them a higher percentage push. No reason to put yourself one more kill in the hole, so they wait a little bit longer. Roy has these dual plasma grenades, so we can see if he is going to try to go for any sort of instant slope. Gets around the corner, gets the molar, uh, and doesn't get the molar melee trade. That's a huge mistake. It's so triggering when you just, that little bit away from being able to get the reach, because sometimes you get a nice bit of a lunge on them when you go around with that, but if you go too early, the player just backs up and just gives you a back whack of your own. Yep, and that was always one of those great uh, parts of close range battle in Halo 3 was you had these little dances. Sure, you had some lunges and maybe some unfortunate ones that would happen more so online, but going in for that fake stutter step, like you could go in for that first melee and just taking a step back and yeah. see that person T-Rex arm at you as they try to try to melee. There's always those little mind games as you knew the ranges of the melee lunges. It's all the little nuances of the game. And again, if you've just been able to grind this one out back in the day, you know exactly what you could do with these weapons. Yeah, because the player movement speed was also at a speed where um, you actually had time to react to it or they didn't have the get out of jail free card where they could like thrust and get the melee on you. So that's what uh, kind of allowed those uh, close range footsy dances, if you want to call it that. It's always been amazing how on this map, what damage the Mauler actually does, been able to break snipes there up time and time again. If you can bait people out or at least take away their attention and then get someone just running in with that Mauler, been able to just Mauler beat down people and insta them left, right, and center. Two kill game here, Sniper Rifle, Mauler in the hands of Fantasy. We have Gabriel on the opposing side who actually cleans up Roy, takes it to a one kill game. And made Roy burn the camo as well. So uh, I think Roy was maybe thinking that camo's free or maybe ducking his head to try to avoid uh, getting sniped and didn't realize the player was already there. So yeah, uh, Roy burning the camo though. So there's a little bit of a silver lining, but not much. Can't really push fantasy unless they catch him off guard. Ooh, and Flamesword's gonna get picked. Now it's just gonna be a one on two with Roy. I don't know where Roy is at. Roy is actually pushing towards Snipe right. side and gave away his position, so I think that's why Fancy has run away. Fancy, however, runs into Roy, gets the no scope, and gets Roy to one shot. Gabriel trying to desperately finish that shot, and it looks like he was getting flanked over by Flamesword, so Flamesword can pick no! that one. Oh, that is a what? big mistake. Roy was crouch walking as he went across the lift. You will sometimes miss that lift like that. Oh you don't want to do that here on main stage, especially when you're up by one. But Thank luckily, he makes that. up for it with a grenade. Oh, 30 seconds. They're going to hunker down. They have to just hold a strong position. They know one player is here on this blue ramp. I would love to see them collapse on that, especially since they know the player's coming up. That is going to be good. That is a huge grenade. Flame is in some trouble. He's just buy some time. Going to duck over into here. The other thing I saw, a decent amount getting over Double into the stick. Shotgun. Double sticky to win it. Double stick. Oh, my God. <laughs> Roy they put just the same arm. What? Oh my god, I was just gonna say, you're, there actually is uh, some validity to dropping down in that shotgun tunnel, uh, even when they know you're going there, because you do fall onto two plasma grenades, and you have just a small little narrow tunnel where you can insta somebody, or if you're if you're Roy and Flamestar, you can both get a uh, stick simultaneously. You can't write that. <laughs> what? Literally, they must have just suicides to keep both planes. Just thought, you know what, if we're going out, you're coming with us, boys, and that's it. <laughs> what the hell? What a... <laughs> okay, game three. We're going into it. It's going to be on Heretic, and this was one of my favorites when this released in Halo 3 because of the plasma grenade start. I knew of Insta Explodes uh, earlier on, but it wasn't as viable. One, because you couldn't practice it nearly as much. And two, just you didn't really have as many uh, options on the map. There was limited spots where you could pick up two plasma grenades and uh, lay those grenades down and use them usefully. Uh, whereas when this update came out, or this DLC map came out, Heretic, which is a remake of Midship, uh, you start with plasma grenades and you can just do some dirty, dirty work with plasma grenades on this. So expect players, when they're both pushed up towards pink, to lay down one grenade on the side of the street and send the other launching into pink too. 25 to 20 pit, 25 to 23 guardian, and we fall on heretic. This is the final map. This will send one of these two teams to the grand finals, all the way to a game number three. This is exactly how we want it. And heretic, obviously remake of midship, the most iconic and post potentially Greatest map of all time. I mean, I've spent too many hours playing Todd of Walsh, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, yeah, like, I've spent, I don't know how many thousands of hours on Midship and Heretic. It's it, it set a, a staple for so many people's lives, and everybody knows this. Oh uh, my God, what a finish. I can't believe they got those angles and those shots all the way across the map. That was always one thing that uh, registration within Halo 3, I you didn't do nearly as much long range with like BR. But um, obviously, these guys have mastered their shops over some of these years or are using some of this new MCC registration. 
Yeah, it's very rare you see that straight off the spawn, usually they kind of dip and tiptoe back and forth, but I mean, it's, it's possible if you can both kind of light up one individual player and hit every single bullet, then you are going to get it, which of course they did. Oh, he was getting ready for insta there. Yeah. That's the first grenade he lays down. So uh, in order to do an insta, insta explode, like I said before, it requires two plasma grenades. One, you lay on, uh, you throw against the side wall, so it has a little bit of time to fall, which gives you time for your, uh, your grenade animation to finish up so you can throw the second grenade faster. Uh, but either way, you throw one on the side wall, and then you send the other one timed with its explosion. And it explodes the second plasma grenade after it travels a set duration. Both players, unfortunately, get split. Flame runs into two of them. Single handler gets taken down in P2. You can hear the grenades in the background, so they clearly got some sort of idea where they may potentially be underneath the base. Roy, again. He's setting up the Insta. Yep. And there it was. So if Fancy was a little bit closer, would have gotten killed by the Insta. However, Fancy, I'm sure, is no stranger to these Insta explodes. Haven't played MCC. Halo 3, quite a bit. P3 control in 2v2, Dave. How imperative is it compared to 4v4? Um, it's tough to say. I don't think it's as powerful as in 4v4 just because you are giving away the position of half a team. And at some point, if players can poke out, you know, you can be a bit more sneaky and a bit more selfish about your positions in 2v2s compared to 4v4s. So 4v4, when you're up there and you're taking damage from a couple players laying down the shots, it's really going to be capitalized on. Whereas uh, when you start taking damage, you can usually get away because you probably have a better idea of your team's map presence. Flame's getting a bit aggressive, unfortunately getting punished for it as well. Dips up top mid, can't run away from that one. He's down, he has respawned though, six to four, still two kill games, or at least answering some of these easy deaths back. Roy comes from death from above, arrives from P3, but Flame's not there to kind of finish this one off. There nope. was no real support. So I don't know where he Flame is. Flame has the death the screen and probably knows exactly where Gabriel is. He, uh, he must so be under he the has element of surprise, but yeah, we do not know exactly where uh, Flame went in the position. Actually, Flame went all the way towards car side, so maybe kind of uh, a miscommunication from Flame and Roy as far as where they're going to push or how they're going to support each other, or maybe Flame just bailed and was not in position as soon as Roy died. Flame can't too. Probably doesn't have the information just yet where they're going to be unless you want to see someone. Well, he's locking down all of red right there. Just yeah. looking over that side, he knows nobody has pushed towards car side red, so Roy can freely push over towards car side red. And now Flame knows he has some sort of sneak. He, he has to know that, uh, having gotten over there. Still taking a lot of damage, though. Roy, Roy taking advantage yeah, of that. He clearly needs to give him the... Uh, oh, and he gets him as well. You ain't hiding nowhere, my friend. Backs it off the floor, gets the kill. Now we'll follow through, try and roll the nade, see if he can hit the damage. Checking over here, P3. I've heard the plasma grenade goes down, so maybe he knows that they're opposing on the opposing side, which they are. That should be a very easy kill. A very easy kill, but unfortunately, it ends up being a trade. Yeah, sometimes too, when, uh, when a player hits you and they hit like their ankles and kind of get pushed away from geometry where you can't get that melee again, you get back to having to hit those shots again, and somehow Roy keeping his shot so steady there. Roy's going to get called out. He'll get pushed as well, but unfortunately, Gabriel doesn't see where he is. <laughs> and that's why being up in the open at Pink 3 sometimes can be a detriment, obviously. Uh, especially when you don't see Roy up there, but more so that they can get you weak and then they can take up some more ground in 2v2s. Look at Flames are just doing that front jump, taking some ground, and they still know this player is at bottom right. Yeah, he just gets the call and he decides to help him out. Beautiful position here from Flames. So both of these kills that he's just picked up is oh. all because of Roy. Gabriel's just position around. free again. He had a couple shots across the map, and you know if Roy has a one or two shot lead, he's already tough enough to beat when you're even in shots with him. If he, if he has a lead on you, it's over. Lead indeed. P3 shots. Aggression there. Look at that screen watching straight across. Where are you looking? What's going on? Flame. Bullets last time get out of the Matrix. Just flying past on the screen. Gabriel doesn't know. Roy's dipped down low from P3 to P1. Finds P2 as well. Fantasy steps up to the challenge. Unfortunately, will be put back in his place. Flame does get stuck, but still a great trade. Yeah, yeah. Fantasy played that correct. Realized that even if he got a couple shots or a melee into Flame, Flame would have just hidden. So he had to go for a sticky grenade play there. Uh, that's, that is semi one of the frustrations there on MIDI in twos, I can think especially, where uh, players are more incentivized to just go for those sticky trades uh, just because it's, you know, it's either that or your team's not going to kill or that player's going to get the shield back. Whereas in fours, your damage that you all put can be more likely to be capitalized on. Or putting that player out of commission for those three or four seconds while they need to wait for their shields to get back is enough of an advantage to warrant you just shooting or meleeing a player. Well, I'm moving. Will be up on bubble. Grenades come down, flames there as well. So needs to be careful here that the two individual players don't attack you, which they do, but the trades at least live. Flames got his shields back. You've just seen him flashing. Carbine goes in. Both of them spawning. Cow one's already moved there. Needs to be careful that he doesn't drop down through bubble. 
Roy's on his own now, taking quite a fair amount of damage. Two players are going to be pushing, so at least be able to drill him as he does. They've come out of the counter safe. area. As long as Flames watching the front at base, Roy is safe, and it looks like they are coordinating that just fine. He's saying, all right, you watching my back on level two of the base, just or am I watching front? So they're, they're distributing which areas they need to watch. Well, they know where one player is, but it's the second one they need to find. Cops reset over on opposing cap. Gabriel does come into the base finally. I'm not entirely sure where the second player is. Royal pushing back. I like I like the pressure. You keep seeing Flaming just checking his back. Although Roy seems safe there, that is there. a pretty easy spot to instant explode if you know what you're doing. So I think Roy is going to bail out of that Eli Ledge a little bit. And it looks like he gets right up close, has the shot advantage on Gabriel. And now he knows the second help is going to help come out from over at Red 2 at Carbine side. Looks like Flames will get that first finish. Almost gets the second on Fantasy and just gonna have to reload and restart at square one because that player has his shields back. But his teammate will spawn next to him, so now they can move together as a unit. Got me in glass or under the base? I don't know where Fantasy is. Eyes up in uh, bubble. Looks like he ran away towards the bubble. One player on the opposing base does drop down, follows it through. There's some great shots. Doesn't actually find a kill. Grenade goes down. Pre empts the oncoming on. This is trouble. Two players come through. They don't know where he is, but he has no shield. And now it's a one kill game. That was a really good job by Fancy in the front of the base to just poke in and lay down some shots to keep their shields down. Didn't need to go in and, com you know, complete the kills right then and there. But, Ooh. yep, right there is the incentivization and turn and uh, stick that. Also, not too risky of a play, to be honest, when you're right next to some player like that. So. Uh, obviously, as soon as that player didn't get the back smack, I think they need to go straight for that two-shot melee or uh, just commit to that back smack if they're already there, like take a couple steps back. I mean, fair play, just give him a blue screen to death, so at least he got the trade off. 4.45 on the clock. Still, even Steven. One kill game here. Gabriel moving up through toilet and bubble over to Carbine. You can see Sword in its all its glory top mid, but in Halo 3 it's not the best of weapons compared to how powerful it used to be in Halo 2. So yeah, yeah, yeah. The Halo 2 sword is a completely oh different God. ballpark. So Halo yeah, Halo on this, just, just Sword and new combo was just a <laughs> joke. <laughs> yep, significantly different here in Halo 3 compared to Halo 2. Flames were doing a great job with that damage there under the base. I could see Roy contemplating dropping down, trying to get that fight. And what a front jump there from Gabriel just flying right in. Flames going to get this finish though, and that's going to be a huge, huge trade. I mean, get straight stuck in and clean it up. Why not? Exactly what he does. He'll still keep this lead. Playing off the back of Bubble while one player does drop down below. He can at least now give the information to where these two players are. P Street will move into base, and he's watching all of his angles. Gabriel's there. He kind of preempts it, but he now needs to be careful of window. That grenade will force them out. He might even give that grenade might give Roy the angle that he needs to get some shots down. Yep, Flames just trying to buy some time. Unfortunately, he still does not have his plasma grenade. Plasma grenade when you're in bubble is such a strong nade to have window? because as soon as a player tries to jump up on you, you can just you know throw that right above the toilet and kill somebody. I thought he might take window instead. He just pushes on through. Gabriel answers back. Go careful, Roy. You gotta be careful of these grenades. It's what he's listening for now, and he's what's stream watching as well. Just being very, very cautious. Gabriel still hard scoping it. Being prepared for what's gonna come. You'd expect this second player to be on P Street. That's where he is. Now I'll run back to base. Well, in fact, dips down to P1. That's rather unorthodox and not what I expected. Roy, strong sides out of there. Sticks his head down, oh. but that pressure, that push is good. And it's actually yeah. like the score 18-18. And I feel like uh, Roy was trying to avoid that angle, oh. but that's also a little tough if he's not able to just get that four shot right away of someone going over towards the red side car. Roy's going to charge right in, get that finish, and still going to be that one kill lead that Optic have been holding majority of this game. pre go down, hoping someone steps in a landmine, but no one's pushing just yet on their own. Flamesaw goes down. Where was that? That was uh, over on car two, potentially. Now he sees him spawning car three. Second play is there. Looking at the base, he spawned as well. Look at Roy in your player cam, how much uh, comfortability he has on this game uh, and awareness. He just realizes, here's the situation. I can do a quick scan of my screen, know where the players are at, and know the times that he can look at Flamesword's screen, especially when Flamesword's on death screen, to realize how close are you to, uh, how close is this player to me, or what's their exact location? Because he's able to kind of just basically do that math in his head where he's like, all right, if the player's over on this exact position on the car, I know I can make it over here just in time, or I know I'll meet this player no later than this, this position. So he can do a bit better of an assessment instead of just kind of blindly saying, oh, there's a guy in mid-car. Well, where exactly in mid-car? So that's why you'll see Roy and Flame you know, glaring over each other's screens. They're getting that little extra information. And they're not doing it, obviously, when they're in the middle of a gunfight. They're doing it at times when they know they have a little breather. They know when uh, it's either when their teammate is dead and they have a death screen on one or both players or uh, in the middle of running away. Like, you notice how Flamesword backed out there for a moment, 
knew he wasn't going to challenge, so he had a moment to glance over Roy's screen and see how things were going on that side of the map. That's the level of awareness that these top players have. He's chasing this kill down, but he needs to be careful because that player will be spawning in the vicinity. Finds him bottom mid, double stick back up. That's fine. Trade for trade, GG. And Flame also tried to do an insta over towards Car 2 off of the, the, the stuck nade on self. So I, that is one like super kind of meta level thing you can do is there's times where if you get stuck by a plasma Chasing. grenade and you're not right next to somebody, you can wait a split second, time with the grenade that's exploding on you and insta somebody with that blue fireball. Flame gets out of the base and runs through P2. Needs to be very careful, obviously cap side up on P3, but he's gonna be in the open. Good shots will force Gabriel back, and that's fair One play. Remaining. Still hanging around P2. Where's Roy at? Right now, both these players are just trying to look for information. You'll notice how uh, both Fancy and Gabriel kind of looking across, saying, like, where are these Good guys? Hit. Like, Because once they know where they're at, then they can kind of formulate their attack. When they're going into unknown territory, it's a bit scarier. 23 to 23. We're all tied up. 42 seconds remaining on the clock. Battle going up at P2. Fantasy sticks his head and wants to get involved. Flamestore gets pushed out. Roy's down the bottom. Has to be careful now. One kill game. They have the lead. Two players they're pushing it. in. They fancy this one. They're looking for Roy. Roy's there. Gets it. Gabriel and Fantasy are going to the Grand Finals. Some close, close games right there. Wow. Classic Halo is an absolute majestic beast to watch. Halo 3 is just, and on MCC, obviously, you know, 343 have worked hard. They've patches, fixes, 60 hertz. It runs and looks like an absolute dream. And I tell you what, watching it here is just, it's just amazing. It brings all the memories back. Yeah, I just keep thinking of so many memories of watching those games, like games that I've played or uh, epic matches that we've seen in the past, you know, from like that 2008, 2010 area. Um, just a lot of great memories of this game, especially on land. You never know. It depends what happens after this. I mean, the fact that, you know, it has land now as MCC and the fact that we're seeing, obviously, we're playing it here. Who knows what the what the future holds? I mean, for me, I'm, I'm all about seeing some like H2A, H2, H3, something of, of the older uh, generation. Obviously, we've done three years of Halo 5, and it's it's been an amazing run. I mean, it's changed some people's lives. When you, when you, you think that 343 and Microsoft are giving away $6 million over three years. So much money. You know, t committing $2 million guaranteed a year, and we've had three world championships. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's been a hell of a run. I'm kind of excited to see what's next. Obviously, no one really knows what's going to be happening with uh, Infinite, to be, to be exact. We've, we know that it's coming, and we've seen the trailer. Um, I'm, I'm excited. I think there's a, there's a good future ahead. Um, no one really knows what it is, but I'm, I'm confident. I'm, I'm excited, and, and who knows? We've, uh, we've got some more Halo 3 action coming up for the rest of today, and then tomorrow we move on with the Grand Finals and crown our final Halo 5 champion. But for myself and Walshie, that's it for us today. Back to the desk. Thank you so much, gents. That's a lovely little reminisce there. And, you know, he is right. It's been an absolutely phenomenal run with Halo 5. Uh, but seeing that Halo 3 action and some of the original stuff that's going on right now is absolutely incredible. Oh, we saw Optic versus GMS. I mean, you know, it could have gone either way. That end game there on Guardian, I mean, just ridiculous. Um, sorry, not Guardian the last one what did we heretic. see heretic. heretic that's the one uh, that's the one thanks gents you're the you're the you're the guys that you're the pros it's yeah. okay you're new here thank Lottie. you very right. much um now absolutely incredible stuff from these two gentlemen uh fantasy looking phenomenal uh they, they just looked like they were in control the whole time what did you guys make of it i mean it almost looked like they've been playing that game for years and they knew exactly where they wanted to go exactly how they wanted to play the situations uh you know and just fortunately didn't pan out that way but there were a lot of really intense battles there uh, I was I was on the edge of my seat for a lot of that and I know like all of Twitter was as well people were going nuts all around my feed was blowing up so many great legends watching people have had so much impact on this franchise in general too it's just really been amazing I mean on that heretic map I felt like it was going really back and forth uh, I didn't really know who was gonna clutch up and take the win at the end and clutch I know you did say that your friends here on GMS were gonna take that yeah. so welcome here fantasy it's so lovely to have you on the desk congratulations Thank man that Thank was you. absolutely amazing uh what is it like to be on the main stage you know going up against legends like that it's credible well you're now a legend yourself because you've just beaten two of the the old school guys who are you know looked up to uh in their in their game and it's 
phenomenal that you could have taken that win. How did it feel in that last game, in that last layer for you? I was sweating the whole game. I was so <laughs> nervous. I'm not going to lie. You were nervous. Yes. Like, it didn't show. It didn't show. You seemed like you guys were in control. Yeah. Uh, in, in point of gameplay wise, uh, how was it for you out there? Did you go in with any tactics with these two guys? Yeah, just be aggressive, but playing them, you can't do that. You had to be passive. Because okay. they know how to control everything. So, so passive aggressive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Yeah. I like it. Um, Clutch, this is a good mate of yours here. <laughs> I can I can see your body language there. You're a good friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is my uh, this is my local. Um, <laughs> sort of, yeah. Sort of, yeah. I mean, rep in Tennessee strong. I mean, fantasy. You've been good online for such a long time, and it's been just a matter of time of when are you going to get the opportunity to do it on land. You got the opportunity. and You played lights out. I mean. You weren't up here for us to talk about that double kill from the last series. That was not oh, arrows. But yeah, that, yeah. that continued on to this series. Now, the likes of Roy and Flame, I knew that their pace of the game was going to kind of throw you all off a little bit. I expect you guys to play Roy and Flame again. So that's something you guys are going to have to go back and rewatch the tape and see a little bit of things that you couldn't have done better because those games were nail biters. I mean, they really were. And I just want to get your verdict, Fantasy. You know, when we were in Guardian, I've got the right map this time. Uh, when we were in Guardian, of course, uh, we did see uh, Optic Gaming take that one from mm -hmm. you guys. Uh, they got the double sticky. It was pretty It was pretty epic. It's kind of a rare occasion to see that happening right at the same time. Uh, when things like that happening in game, do you notice? Does it put a little bit more pressure on your shoulders, or do you sort of just shake it off and not bothered? We don't let it get to us. We just said, hey, we lost this one, just focus on the next game, and that's what we did. Got and the how, w. how are you feeling going into the rest of the competition? You know, you have Championship Sunday uh, coming tomorrow, and it's going to be epic, uh, the Battle of the Ages. How are you guys feeling? We're ready. We're ready to play whoever. I love that. And do you reckon you're going to be lifting the trophy? Of course. Oh, I like it. I like. Has he always been this confident? Yeah, he's always confident, cocky. He, he's a <laughs> lot like me. I mean, and, and he plays like it. He always is jumping out. He, you can tell the confidence that he plays with just based on the presence he brings, his shot. I mean, we've seen it on main stage finally. We've seen Fantasy perform just just as good as anybody in Halo 3 can. Like a dream. Now, I do have one question for you, Fantasy. <laughs> Kyle was like taking so much credit for picking you in the series before that you guys took down Tuscan Master Fear, but he was quick to jump off that bandwagon as soon as he saw the likes of Roy and Flame on main stage. I backed you. Do you have anything to say to Kyle? No, no. That's what's up. No, but I want to know, uh, you know, ask you, because you, you alluded to this a little bit when you came up on the desk. Uh, you have to play completely different against these guys. And yeah. What is it like going up against Roy and Flame as opposed to, uh, you know, all these years of practice and, and, and experience you guys have gone through so many other players? They just know how to control the map very well. You can't, like, do, you can't do any mistakes against them. And how many times do you feel like you've been punished? Like, do you feel like you guys were making a lot of mistakes, oh, yeah. and that's why we it was so close? So many mistakes. Mm -hmm. And what would you? What are you guys going to do differently? Because I, I, like Wes said, I, I do think they're going to come back and play you guys again. I think it's going to be a very hard, drawn-out fight because they had a few things themselves. Uh, even on that Guardian game, I don't know if you saw Roy short lift uh, going over to the camera. Oh yeah, he felt the map. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so that was going on the short list. That was uh, interesting. See, so I haven't seen one of those in quite some time, but definitely been on the receiving end of that before. Well, fantasy, congratulations, and lovely to have you up here on the desk. Thank uh, you with some of your old pals as well. Uh, congratulations, and I wish you the best of luck going into the rest of the tournament. You've got a lot of games mm -hmm. to play tomorrow, and you've got, you know, you've got a series to get through. So get some sleep, get some food in you, and uh, yeah, just warm those hands up for the championship when you <laughs> may be lifting that trophy. Or sh mate. Should Thank we get so a much. prediction for it? Thank you all. A, a prediction? prediction. Do you yeah, think? for the next series. Oh, yeah, what do you think? Tusk we've got self-proclaimed versus one time coming neighbor? up next. Er. What do you think? Tuscan oh, Fear versus Evader and Gun Type. Oh. You know these guys very well. Better than anyone, probably. Yeah, I'm going to go with Fear. Master Good. Fear and Tusk. I like okay. the pick. Uh, Interesting. Oh, well, that's our fourth panel member here. <laughs> uh, guys, don't go anywhere. We have one more game for you this evening. It's going to be a good one. Self-proclaimed versus one time are going to be head-to-head -head on that main stage. A quick break. Don't go anywhere.
Join now and get your first month for one dollar. Our duty as soldiers is to protect humanity, whatever the cost. campaign against the humans. That's not going to happen. Chief! If he leaves the Covenant fleet to Earth, they won't stand a chance. You have to stop him. Xbox One S, the best value in games and entertainment. Now that's a big fun deal. Over 100 great games. Endless play. New titles monthly. More is... My job? It's pretty awesome. I work the drive through at Xbox Game Pass. Hey, welcome to Game Pass. How can I help you? We'll take Halo and Gears of War. Yeah, get Banjo-Kazooie, get Banjo-Kazooie. You can get all of these and it's just $9.99 a month. What? It's weirdly challenging to convince people they can get over 100 games. Every game? You can get all of them. All right, Soul Calibur 2? All of them. <laughs> oh, we got zombie games. Borderlands? All of them. So then we'll take everything? Excellent choice. I love this guy. Comes in every Friday.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to your evening stream. We are here for your HCS 2018 finals, but we are also bringing you the Halo 3 2v2 showdown. Yes, you're not dreaming. This is it. We've got Halo 3 in the house here at DreamHack Atlanta. My name is Lottie Van Prague, and I'm desk hosting for this evening. I'm joined by my two wonderful friends, because we are now friends on the desk. We've been here all day and all day yesterday. I'm with Clutch and Elamite. Gentlemen, welcome Welcome back to the desk. Uh, we have some epic lineups still uh, for the remainder of this evening. And what a better way to celebrate Halo 3 than having some legends coming on board, playing on main stage, and just entertaining us all. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to this next series. It's actually New School versus New School in it. <laughs> we got Evader and Gun Type versus Tusk and Master Fear. Now, these two guys, these two teams also know each other very well. So there's going to be, a, like I said before, a lot of mind games played with these guys. I mean, the way they move around the map and counter each other, there's so much that's going into each thought process of each one of these players because they know how the other team wants to play the map. Yeah, I think it's going to be a lot different than what we saw when Roy and Flamesword were in the game. These two teams are going to be much more aggressive, I'm going to imagine, when they're facing up against each other. There's so much history of competing with nothing on the line or maybe a few pennies here and there. But now we're in the big the big money. This is where we start to see the separation and thousands of dollar differentials here between each placing. Now, gents, let's have a look at the updated bracket right now to see where everybody is at. Now, of course, we've had Optic Gaming versus GMS and GMS. MS did take that one. Uh, and now they're in the elimination finals. Uh, that'll be interesting to see which one of these teams that we're seeing now, self-proclaimed all one time, coming up against OG. I mean, this is going to be interesting. But, you know, I've, I've seen them, you know, playing against these guys before, uh, self-proclaimed, playing against GMS and fell short to them. It was 2-0. and oh. And then, of course, we've also got... Um, one time as well, coming up against Optic Gaming. Can they break through this barrier now, beat one of these teams, beat each other, and then go up against and face one of those? I mean, I feel like whichever team wins this is in a lot of trouble because they're going to have to play an angry Roy and Flame Sword. They're going to have to play a Roy and Flame Sword that really want to get back to the finals, but they can't be thinking about that series. They got to focus on this one, Kyle. Yeah, you got to take one at a time here, and we can see these games are not blowouts by any means, and, and now we're not seeing those 2 O's anymore. We're seeing it go the distance all the way to the tiebreaker match and down to the wire at that. So I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, I mean, we definitely saw a few hiccups from, from Roy and Flame Sword that are a little uncharacteristic. And just like we saw from Splice in Halo 5, they're going to gradually warm up more and more and more as time goes on and more matches under their belt. Now, Elamite, back in the day, are we seeing the same standard of Halo 3 that you would have seen a long time ago? Are these guys really bringing it back to the table? I mean, we're definitely seeing a high level of play, but it's hard to, it's kind of a stretch to go that distance here. We're seeing insta-splodes that really kind of developed towards the end of Halo 3 when you're bouncing one plasma grenade off another to create a larger explosion there. Um, but, you know, to say Roy and Flame sort of playing at their Halo 3 potential, that would just be an insult to them, really. Well, gents, let's have a look at our series layout now to see what maps these guys are going to be playing on and in what order. So we've got Heretic up first, Guardian, and then if it goes the distance, we've got Pit. Uh, these are going to be interesting because Heretic, you know, it reminds me of Midship, of course. It is, you know, made on that as well and, and somewhat truth, too. Uh, guys, looking at these, how do they fit these teams? I think one time really benefits from sniper control and having multiple snipes on the map. Master Fear and Tusk are both pretty ridiculous when it comes to sniping. That being said, they have to get past game one. And can they get past game one? I don't know because Evader, Evader and Guntype are very, I'll, I'll call it like nerdy with the way they play the game. They, they do a lot of things that like we never even did. They have like nades. From anywhere on the map, they know how to nade a certain spot. They know a lot of nooks and crannies, as Lottie would say, and, and a lot of aspects of the game that Tusk and Master Fear might not be aware of. So they could have a strong advantage this game one, and can they use that to snowball into these further maps? I'm not sure. Yeah, I mean, and considering it's a, the 2v2 versus the 4v4 scenario, I mean, 4v4 is just so so much of a faster paced game and and you don't necessarily have time uh, very often to throw those kind of nades and, and, and get in those circumstances where they're actually going to be beneficial to you uh in 2v2 you find that scenario happening a lot more and like um on, on heretic there was no standstill in 4v4 like you can see here into the 2v2s well gentlemen the game is ready our players are ready and the 2v2 showdown will go on it's my pleasure to throw to your casters it's strong side and gaskin 
Thank you, Lottie. Yeah, we're here, Dan. We're casting some Halo 3. This is your second match. You're, you're getting it all today. I'm getting all the luck, but thankfully I get my duo, I get my partner here for some Halo 3 action. And you are a Halo 3, a Halo 2 legend, so it's quite right that you should be able to cast this incredible game. We've got some incredible maps coming up here too. Heretic, Guardian, and Pit. You know, I'm hoping we just see all three. I, I, I know it's more stress on the players, but I just want to see some more games of Halo 3 here. I'm hyped to see these. And we've got Gun Type, we've got Evader. I remember seeing Gun Type's name back in the day playing in matchmaking. I used to play on a bunch of Smurf accounts and scope out all the talent. Gun Type was one of those names. And here he is now, years later, sitting on main stage for the Halo 3 2v2 showdown. He's back. It's incredible that these guys are getting this chance to perform on main stage. And of course, they want to get back into that lower bracket, into that elimination bracket final to try and topple the giants that are Optic Gaming. Of course, uh, one time did lose to GMS and self-proclaimed they lost to OG, those boys. So they'll want to try and get their revenge. But as you said, in terms of maps, I think we have probably three of the greatest Halo 3 maps around. I'm so excited for it. And I love what Clutch was saying, that some of these players are doing things that are slightly different, slightly more obnoxious than we might have seen back in the day in 4v4 because it's a lot slower 2v2. You get the chance to go for these slightly more trickier jumps. Yeah, I mean, even talking about 2v2s, back in the day, I remember them getting very, very slow. I mean, whether there was money on the line or just pride on the line, these would get so slow. You're just sitting back, just waiting for anybody to make a move. But here, we're seeing people move quick, keep up that aggression immediately. So starting off with gum type, immediately trying to make his way over towards pink side. And that's where we're going to see players really try and get a lot of control going up to pink three, whether it's Halo 2 or Halo 3. That pink tower is the most important spot on the map. And of course, we're not going to see anything crazy like a sword being able to be used either. Instead, we're just going to see these BRs just being able to burst across map. Not allow too much control from that top middle spot. You can see just sitting in window here, trying to gauge where one time we're going to be pushing. Interestingly enough as well, one time spoke to them just before the match and they were saying how this is actually their weakest game type. So they feel like if they can win this, they can seal the deal here because they feel like on Pit, they feel like on Guardian, they're snipers and they feel so comfortable playing on maps with snipers. So they're going for a win here, but on the other side, self-proclaimed, they feel like this is one of their better game types and they feel like Pit is their weakest. About to see a double kill here from Gun Type. Is he going to jump back out? No, nope. he's going to play it safe. He's going to have a Vader finish off the kill. That's some incredible teamwork from these two. Well, we saw the damage that one time were able to do with the sniper rifle, so I'm not surprised why they want to move across to some of those maps that do have sniper rifles on them. As Gun Type is just going to try and stay alive here, of course, sticking that head down, just showing the back. Jumping around every angle, trying to be as tricky as possible. Certainly players who know how to maneuver their way around the map, know how to be sneaky, did benefit a lot playing Halo 3. And you saw him just get that beat down. Getting that beat down is so crucial if you're gonna die. Just getting that player down to one shot so your teammate has at least an opportunity to pick up that kill. Gun type's flying out, but Master Fear is flying out as well. And he'll get the best of gun type. And we're seeing a lot of close matches today. I've just been posted back, sitting back, just pretty much living a dream watching these Halo 3 matches and I love how close all these matches have been throughout today. Just waiting, absorbing all of the incredible action that is unfolding in front of us as Master Fear picks up a big kill on Evader there. I mean, Evader and Gun Type, they're going to be feeling pretty bad after going out to the OG boys. I've heard a lot of talk about Evader especially and how he was going to perform at this event. I think he'll be more than happy to get this far, but I'm sure he would love to get into that grand final being cast tomorrow. That's going to be an exciting one. Going to see a push there. Evader's going to go down underneath the map and talking about Insta-splodes. We heard Walsh talking about Insta-splodes earlier. We're seeing a lot of attempts for Insta-splodes. Walsh is definitely one of the best at making those happen back in the day. Gun type picks up a kill on Master Fu. Down by two kills. How to stick together. You see them moving around, tag teaming right here. Not straying too far away from each other. Throwing some nades across the map, trying to get some connection with the frags, and it's going to bounce a, a frag off the top there at pink one, so that's not going to do too much damage. Thinking a player might be charging, but on the other side, Evader. Nice kill from him, picking up the beatdown. Only down by one kill now, but you'll see 
constantly putting his focus towards that pink side, getting up to pink three, able to just get so many sight lines. And now catching Tusk off guard by himself. Great teamwork again from the self-proclaimed squad. And then also the sticky death nade. And so clutch. And there's a lot less screen watching again when we were watching Flame Sword and we were watching Roy. There were times where Flamesword was watching Roy's screen and not even playing the game and then suddenly coming back as soon as he knew there was a Spartan coming onto his screen. It's amazing to see this game in a LAN environment again and seeing how these newer players, and I say newer players because they're not really that new, they've been playing so much Hello 3, are adapting to playing on the main stage. Yeah, and most of these players played a lot of Halo 3 back in the day too, and they started playing a lot recently for this tournament. Of course. So this is like a second opportunity. This is a second chance here. Still very close here, 13 to 12. Self-proclaimed stuck underneath the base, but they're gonna get another trade. Back and forth we go here on Heretic. Gun type staying alive underneath the base again. Nice teamwork from Self-proclaimed, pushing out towards pink side, but one time's gonna finish off the kill underneath the base. Yeah, Master Fear doing all the work at the moment. 10 kills. Very confident in his BR capability. We saw in the previous, in the winner's bracket final, how tight Heretic's layer can be. Very rarely do you see a big lead happen when teams are so closely contested. Gaskin, who was your 2v2 teammate back in the day? I mean, uh, there, there's several players. I'll give a shout out to Wonderboy. I mean, I team with Wonderboy and he's one hell of a player. Uh, we had a lot of fun playing 2v2, that's for sure. It didn't really matter which iteration of Halo. I could always trust him to have my back. I see a smile over there from Wonderboy. Back in production, the duo, the duo. Over to Master Fear though, as we're tied up 16 to 16. This is a big game at number one. And also a big series here. The loser is going home. Master Fear staying around pink two. Two players underneath the base. We're gonna see if one time can make something happen here. Not gonna push underneath the base. Does not wanna risk it. Tusk is gonna hang back. And now we'll see them both pick up two easy kills as they try and lift up out of the base. But catching Evader off spawn. Gotta love when those spawns happen there. Nice, easy kill. Going for the double. Yep, he'll pick up the double and be taken down. But now with a five kill lead, only three kills remaining here, Dan. A master fear, his shot is just on point as well. Making sure he gets close enough to put those shots in and get a beat down just following afterwards. And look at him communicating how many shots he's put into his enemy, saying, look, They've got two shots in them. They're a one shot. You can push now, you can't push now. Communication is so key and important. If it's not key and important in 4v4, it's even more so in 2v2. Of course, there isn't any kind of flags to worry about. It's all about that slaying power. So you're not gonna see your objective players uh, thrive in a 2v2 environment. It's something, all about slays. And something so different about Halo 3, even Halo 2, I mean, how important it is to just stay alive, to buy that extra second, to buy two seconds. And I feel like when you compare it to Halo 5, it's very quick, very fast. You see players pushing out more aggressively, but here you just see a lot of dipsy doodling happen. You, you, you just gotta make it around that circle. You gotta make them chase. You play ring around the Rosie, and that is gonna do it though, as he finishes off the kill here on Evader, taking game number one. They said it was their weakest game type. They gotta be feeling pretty good right now going into the next one. Yeah, that has me slightly worried if they're saying that's their weakest game type because they look extremely just in control. Their P control was fantastic. They knew when to push top middle, when to look into those windows. Perfect choice of where to be looking off spawn. Very impressed with everything from these boys. I mean, I'm giggling just casting this game because I never thought I would so get the good. opportunity to do so. And then to see players performing this well in front of a stage, in front of a crowd like this, is just a phenomenal. Halo 2 throwback, 2v2 showdown happened. Let's see, maybe something in the future, I don't know. I mean, we have the possibility, right, with MCC now, Halo 2, Halo 3, all the <laughs> games are there. Uh, but this is certainly a throwback to how incredible Halo 3 was. It, it was the, the height of esports back in the day, really, wasn't it? Uh, maybe too early for its time. It's incredible to see the support on social media right now. So many people coming out of the woodwork, so many people talking about this event, so many people watching the event online now as well. I mean, there is so much support around this. And I've seen a few people say like, these games came out really, really early. Man, imagine if they came out right now, like how insanely popular they could be as well, Dan. I mean, who'd have thought a 10-year-old game we'd be here casting something as phenomenal as this. Insane. I mean, 
now we get to go on to Guardian, and now we get to see whether the incredible performance from Heretic can carry over here. Of course, the sniper rifle now respawns every 150 seconds. That is going to be an opportunity for decent sniper players to really show what they're worth. And we know there are incredible sniper players in this game. Master Fear, he's the one on the team who goes for that sniper, Whoa. and he's going to pick up an early double kill in the first 15 seconds. And you know what? He's got a Christmas present right there as well. A nice sniper rifle. Teammate with camo, they've got all the goodies going to get three shots off, not going to connect, but no worries because they still have total control here. And now they can just kind of sit back and let self-proclaim make the mistake. They've got camo. Make that opening happen. Let self-proclaim peek around the corner and just take one of their faces. And one time we're so close to that winner's bracket final as well. It was so neck and neck with GMS in the previous series they played. They just lost out a few individual moments where they weren't winning those individual BR fights or they just would miss a snipe or two. But maybe now they've warmed up a little bit. Maybe now they might be used to the main stage. This was one of the funnest charges back in the day. Charging across top middle with the sniper. You know the other teams trapped over at lift, trapped over at green. And you're just making that push over to, or excuse me, towards blue. Just making that push across top mid. And you heard the mauler going as well. You know full well Tusk has that in his hand and it's so scary walking around the corner to be faced by a mauler. It was always better than a shotgun, in my opinion. It was something satisfying about a mauler. I don't know if it was the noise or the fact it doesn't look particularly terrifying, but it does incredible damage. Master Fear picking up the killing spree, checking forward. The spawner at green, not gonna get it. It looks like the player could possibly have spawned over at Snipe, checking his six here, making sure no one's behind him. Nade's coming in, not gonna land in. So Master Fear now getting hit by a grenade. He's gonna have to back down, rotating around towards his teammate. Self-proclaim have to just get a player weak to make that push across top mid, but it's definitely it's definitely difficult when you know they've got a sniper because an easy poke around the corner gets down to a body shot just like that makes a push incredibly hard. But Master Fear is now out of ammo. And one time, 8-0 up. Imagine the scenes if we saw a 25-0. I want to hear what their communication's like, though. Let's jump into an Astro listening with one time. Drop on, drop on, drop on. Yeah. Drop on. Is that the, is that the, I got him. I'm gonna try it. Camel, camel, camel. I don't see a veteran. Camel's up. I got it, I got it, I got it, I'll get it. I have Molly. He's lifting, 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 lifting. I made it. Right, push. Camel, camel. Just run, just run, just run. He's bottom blue, bottom blue. Alright. Yo, S1, S2. Yeah. S3, S3, look at S3. What shot? Look at him, look at him. Look at Bandy, look at Bandy. Yeah. I can't help you. It's weak, it's weak. I got Scythe, I got Scythe. Yo, get Molly, get Molly, it's right here. Alright. It's out of ammo, I think. Alright. Are you sure? I can pick it up. I don't know. Yeah, Doc, right here. Tell me what you see. Watch your right, green. I'm going green. Watch your... Oh. One's gauge on my throw nades. Yeah, do no nades. Yeah. Watch out, watch out. Stop blue. And we were talking about just before this match how I thought games would have slowed down so much from back in the day, and now we're seeing it completely come to a standstill. They know what's on the line. They do not want to give up any kills. It's 10 to 1. Tusk has got the sniper. I mean, this is magic right here. This is the beauty of this game. You feel so comfortable, and it is so fun to have this in oh. your hands here in this type of moment. And the communication was so calm and just... There wasn't really much said. It's so different in comparison to 4v4, and you hear these weird callouts as well. Every player had their different callouts. Every team had their different callouts. And of course, we had callouts that were named after players. It became so famous. That's what I loved about Halo 3. Screen watching definitely so much. Oh, nice. So much more important and happened so much more back with Halo 3. I think the camo might be popping as well. That's why we're seeing players kind of dart over there to try and grab that one. Maybe that's what self-proclaimed need to get back into this one because they're really struggling. Ten kills down at the moment. There's that camouflage. Did just pop. Tusk saw it disappear, so he's going to be trying to chase this camouflage player. He's got eyes on him. Oh, imagine. 
going for the body shot, not going to be able to connect there. Nades come in from Evader as well, so he'll be finished off. But you know what? They've got a they've got a decent lead. They they've got room to make some errors, and now Evader is going to try and make something happen, bring his team back into this with the sniper. Yeah, you need to get some control. Start working some spawn kills. Look in the right areas. Hummel one time into the ground, but they're not able to do so. Evader missing shots here is not going to help. Having to retreat to gold one. Doesn't want to give away any sniper bullets. Even if it's three, that could be three important kills for one time and get them closer to the elimination bracket finals. He's got his teammate nearby, standing close. Doesn't want to stray away too no, far, and Tusk, no. sneaky plays from Tusk, gets the assassination and the double kill. Actually, sorry, they finish off both of them, but Tusk with a very sneaky play then. And I mean, in Halo 3, you did have players who were just known for being sneaky, known who would take those risks. Because of course, there is no radar. You've got to just listen. You've got to be very careful, very aware. You can get behind players. It was what I was known for in Halo 3. I was known as a sneaky beaver. I loved to just get behind a team whilst my teammates distracted. Would you say you were the sneakiest? I'd say I was one of the European sneaky beavers, for sure. I was up there. I wouldn't say I was the sneakiest. There were some incredibly sneaky beavers, but I was up there. Well, one time is definitely feeling very good right now as they are moments away, possibly, from winning game number two and moving on to face against Roy and Flamesword, which is going to be a hell of a matchup to watch as well if they can do it. Self-proclaimed have got a lot of time still, but they've got to make something happen quick because that time disappears incredibly fast here. You think you've got a lot of time, but it ticks away. Camouflage coming up. Just a couple of seconds, though, and Self-Proclaimed going to be more than happy having this gold side. Gun type's going to be the man who gets it. Needs to do something big, but these nades are hitting him like a truck, and he goes down. What an important kill from Tusk. And Master Fear picks one up as well. Just five kills needed, and you've got to say, one time looked like they're heading towards the elimination bracket finals. Master Fear just making sure no players around. He spots a player down at Snipe 1. Bottom middle getting charged from Snipe 2 as well. Nades everywhere, but it's going to be Tusk picking up the double kill, coming in to clean up house. Remaining. And there's only three kills remaining here, Dan. One time, looking very strong right now. Spots the player at front blue. Can he just peek out? Looking for the turtle head just to get that headshot. You know what? I heard so much about gun type, about Evader. I was expecting so much. I think we might see a breadstick at the moment for one of them as well. Just the one kill. As uh, It's now just one kill as well for one time to win this game. And uh, as Walsh would say back in the day, this is a uh, charge oh! because you can't lose. Taking down a Vader, a snipe shot to the face. And one time, they are doing it. They're fighting their way back through the elimination bracket. They're going up against Roy. They're going up against Flame Sword. What do you think, Dan? Well, what do you think? I think one time will be more than happy to take a stab at Roy and Flame Sword the way they're playing. They want to get into that grand final to have another shot at GMX, who took them down earlier in the winner's bracket semi-finals. Uh, it is a shame, of course, for Guntype and Evader. They came this far, they, they played so well. I think at the end, Evader had one kill in that last game. That's not the best way to go out and to be remembered, hey. but you know what? But he he's made it here. He's beaten so many players to get here, and he's played phenomenally, as all of them have thus far. And I've been so impressed, and you can see the smile on my face. It's so much fun to cast Halo 3. It's amazing, the snipe shots. The, the, just so many things about it. I mean, just watching it, I'm sure so many of you at home as well, just get that feeling, get that, that, that moment you remember, just getting the sniper, maybe pulling off a 360 no scope or something absolutely insane, or you, you just have those, those memories where you see another player making a move and you just get that feeling inside. And honestly, it makes you want to pick up the controller and just play a bit. Well, do you know someone who did hit a lot of snipe shots? Not clutch, Elamite hit a lot of snipe shots. Guys, over to you on the desk. He did indeed, guys. You know, you've got to give it to him. You've got to give it to him. Uh, what an amazing series, guys. You know, we've, we've finally found somebody who's going to be coming through and facing Optic Gaming a little bit later on. And that will be very, very exciting. We're back on the desk. And let's just break that down a little bit. You know, we saw Heretic and we saw Guardian there. Uh, these two teams fairly evenly matched, I would say, but just one time managing just to steal it away. Yeah, I mean, uh, really impressive performance from one time. I mean, they were just had control of the map. You know, Heretic, of course, was uh, a lot closer, but 
from then on like was 10 to 1 at one point and there was just no coming back it just kind of steamrolled out of control here and uh, you know if you're off to gaming you're they were watching that on the back I passed uh, Roy and flame sword and you know you got to be feeling a little bit worried because these guys are playing on their a game yeah we got asked earlier about the quality of halo that we're looking at and I love what I saw out of one time in this series the bait and switching the angles that these guys are taking to complement each other's gameplays throughout the entire series both games I mean I think we are seeing a very high level of Halo 3. I think these guys might have been able to compete back then. I know we're watching 2v2s and 4v4s is completely different, but I played 4s with both these guys, and I know that they can play Halo in a constructive way, and we went to that listening, and that really spoke out to me because I know how these guys communicate, and now everyone knows how these guys communicate. They communicate like... Like the snake bites of the world, like the top teams, they're, they're telling each other exactly what they're doing and exactly where the enemy team is going and what they want to do to stop them. Yeah, they definitely sound like season vets in there. I mean, these guys have a clear game plan. Uh, I think they learned a lot from facing off against Roy and Flame Sword earlier. Um, and you realize, like, uh, you, you make one little mistake. Halo 3, especially more than any other Halo, once you take out Spinch, once you take out uh, Thrust and, and Clamors, you get punished for your map position and any little mistake you make. If you get yourself caught out under glass, there is no, you know, sprint, thrust, clamber up and get behind an opponent. No, they know where you are. They can throw grenades and stop you in your tracks. Uh, you know, we used to call them anti-charging grenades back in the day you know you I, I drop a plasma right here and if you charge me you're dead i know i have this much time to recover well one time press through the elimination bracket and next they will be facing the old school legends optic gaming we're gonna go to a quick break while these guys get set up on the main stage don't go anywhere we'll be back right after this Join now and get your first month for one dollar.
as soldiers is to protect humanity, whatever the cost. I will continue my campaign against the humans. That's not going to happen. Chief! the Covenant fleet to Earth. They won't stand a chance. You have to stop them. Yes. Guys, I gotta go AFK. Okay. Be right back. is placing the Pillar of Autumn in Combat Alert Alpha. It's payback time, ODST. Move out!
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back for some late night Halo 3. That is right, we are here at the HCS 2018 finals here at DreamHack Atlanta. And I am so happy to be bringing you our final game of today. It's the Halo 3 2v2 showdown, and we've got one time versus Optic Gaming on the cards. I am Lottie Van Prague. I am hosting the desk for the remainder of this evening, and I am joined by a face you've already seen before, but one you haven't seen for a little while is Dan Gaskin. And of course, I've got Clutch next to me as well. Well, Dan, welcome to the desk. You Lovely know, to have you. I wouldn't have said the comment about the sniper about Clutch if I knew I had to stand next to him right now. <laughs> I feel very small and I'm very scared, but I know he's a good friend, really. He is a good friend, really. Oh, well, honestly, well, watch that. It's well a said great that massage. Comment after no touching, no touching. That's enough. That's enough. Well, Dan, obviously, you've been casting the game. You casted the last game that we just saw. You know, what was your verdict on that series? And, you know, one time making it through now against Optic Gaming. I mean, one time, the fact they were able to win 25 to 5, to make a player that, with the standard that we've seen throughout Halo 3 get one kill, in that game, it's just absolutely incredible. It just says to me that one time they want to get through to that grand final. They want to have another stab at GMS, who are just waiting in the wings in the grand final tomorrow. Absolutely. I'm very, very excited for this. Let's take a look at what we have coming up for this final series and the two teams that are going head to head on that main stage. We've got the boys, Optic Gaming, and we've also got One Time. That's a little bit the wrong way around, but that doesn't matter too much. Uh, they're both of the same kind of caliber. We have seen One Time performing outstandingly. But can they live up to the expectations against these amazing old school legends? Uh, Dan, you say they want another shot against GMS. I don't think they're going to get it. This Optic team has played very well. And they honestly, if that series went to game five against GMS in the winner's finals, they could have came out on top. I mean, those games were nail biters. I expect Optic to come out and dominate this one-time team. Yeah, I've got to agree. I mean, Optic want another shot at GMS as well. I think that's what both of these teams are battling for. Who gets to take that revenge in the grand final? It's going to be an exciting one. I feel like that series for Optic Gaming was so short-lived. I think they had so much more left in the tank, and it really was down to the wire. We're having a look at the finals bracket right now on your screens. There you go. GMS are waiting in the wings, like you said, Dan. They're there in that grand final spot. But the question is, who is going to be there up against them tomorrow? Is it going to be one time, or is it going to be Optic Gaming. I think I'm favoring Optic right now. I think they've had uh, a little bit of trouble against that GMS squad and they are out for blood. It could come down to map selection. Certainly, if we don't have any sniper rifles, I think that's going to favor Optic. I mean, we know how good Roy's BR is and how phenomenal he's been performing thus far. Whereas the guys on one time, when you put sniper rifles in their hands, they've looked phenomenal and they've looked so terrifying. And that man on your screen, Tusk, Watch out for him with the camouflage as well. He's not scared to dive on that one, regardless of what's staring at him. Yeah, I know I said I expect Optic to dominate, but you're right, Dan. It does really come down to the map choice, because if this series starts off with the Narrows, or they have a Narrows game too, Master Fear and Tusk are both very dominant Narrows Team Slayer players. And I know we saw them lose it to GMS, but it was only because a few things went wrong, and Fantasy did some 360, 180, behind the back flip, no scope <laughs> for a double. And I don't expect something like that to happen again. And if they can get some confidence built off a of Narrows Team Slayer and take it to a game two or a game two or a game three, they really do have the skill to hang with Roy and, and Flame in this game. You know, one time we're coming through that elimination bracket. So they had fallen short once before. Now the question is, was it just a one time thing, ah. excuse the pun, uh, when they managed to take that series last time? And is it just going to happen again? Are they going to be able to clutch up against this Optic roster, which is looking pretty strong? I think Roy looked angry when he lost, and I saw he tweeted out with a couple of angry faces as well. He's going to be out for blood here, and if I'm a one-time player, I don't want to be going up against any player like Roy if he's angry. We know what happened back in the day when he was on his best, and if he gets a BR on his hands, if he's feeling confident, he should be able to just dominate and just keep Flamesword as an assister. If Flamesword's communicating like he has been, they should be able to carry this victory. Now, Clutch, you know these Optic guys better than anybody. Uh, are they playing up to their utmost potential? I would say no. Um, I think that they are playing pretty well, better than I thought they honestly would be at this point in time. But, I mean, we've seen such big plays from Roy and Flame in Halo 3. And that was after three straight years of grinding Halo 3 every day. And unfortunately, that's not what they're doing right now. They did prepare a little bit for this tournament, but no, they're not back to 100%. It's almost virtually impossible to get back to 100% without a lot of time spent grinding. And there just wasn't enough time for them to catch up. But they are doing a very good job of representing 
the legacy that they had in Halo 3. Now, we did see on our screens a little bit earlier on that we had the series layout there. We had Construct, Heretic, and Narrows. Now, Dan, you did say that it could depend on this series layout, and what are you thinking looking at that? Well, there is a Narrows there, but it's just whether they can get to that Game 3. I'm very excited to see Construct. Yeah, that's a, that's a game type that you can really do a lot of different things to throw your opponents off. You can play it fast, you can take risks. Construct's going to be the biggest map we have in a 2v2. And I had never really like had too much experience playing a 2v2, but I imagine you can't... In a 4v4, you can't watch everything. You can't watch both purples, sword legs, and gold all at the same time while watching the back ramp. It's going to be almost impossible to be watching everything in 2v2s. It's going to be really interesting to see how Flame and Roy decide to split the map into fourths, into halves, to, to stop themselves from having to watch everything at once. Because there's a lot of space to kind of sneak behind, but there's also a lot of space to hide. So if you get a lead of maybe two, three kills, we might see teams just kind of sit back, hide, and wait and try and... Uh, extend this game and just run down that clock a little bit. Speaking of that, I'm going to sit back, hide and wait for the result for this because our game is ready to go and I'm going to throw over to two gentlemen who I know will do this justice. This game is one time versus Optic Gaming and it is on set and bravo. Thank you very much, Lottie, and it is the final time we get to do this tonight, Andy. It's the final Halo 3 showdown match for tonight, and we've got two legends still in the tournament. Yes, Who do. would have thought this right now? Still the old school versus the new school. Yeah. I'm still not sure what year it is, though, to be honest. I mean, nope. there's a chance here that Roy and Flamesword might end up in a grand final of a Halo 3 tournament. It's pretty amazing, and what an exciting evening it's been. I mean, the hype in the room. You guys have been amazing, of course, all the hype online as well. Thank you for joining us. For some late night Halo 3, map number one, gonna be Construct. We haven't seen it just yet. And like the guys were saying on the desk, it's gonna play a lot differently than the maps we've seen so far. Yeah, definitely. I mean, three different levels to this map, and we're gonna get straight into it here. And it's all gonna be about this initial battle down low. And Tusk is gonna go up against Roy, and he's gonna get taken down there. Not sure what the player cams are at the moment. Double kill coming in early, though, and the Rockets are gonna be picked up here early on. Yeah, just like Anse was saying, we'll get those swapped. You see those points of view a little wacky. You're not watching Roy here on your screen. Uh, you're actually here on the side of the guys of OT as well. Yeah, this is Master Fear, I believe, we're watching right now. So he's going to have those rockets to work with, and Roy looks like he might be dipping down for that sniper rifle as well. Flamesword's going to be caught on the closed street there and cleaned up pretty quickly, and this is the perfect setup here. If you have control of these purples, especially with the rockets, then you put yourself in a good position to pick up these kills. Yep. Master Fear just going to prowl around the sword area. Uh, like we said, Contract, lots of area to play. Whether it plays a lot bigger than a map like the Pit, I think is up for debate. Uh, but here they are, four to one, uh, early lead as we see Tusk also trying to get away bottom middle. But looking pretty comfortable for the OT guys. Yeah, and it's Roy who managed to get the sniper rifle away. And at the moment, he's going to be hunted down here pretty quickly by Master Fear. Flamesaw's trying to get the finish on the kill, but cannot, unfortunately for him, finish that one off. And now you're going to see a five to one and two rockets still to play with. One time, they have a commanding lead. Yeah, Flamesaw here, open glass. Needs to be careful. Ooh. Easy to get picked up. Oh, Flamesaw's big challenge. Flamesaw's crazy. Yeah, not sure what's happening. Another Wait double. Seven to one. In favor of one time Master Fear right now with a number of kills on the board and still one rocket left. Gonna be looking for those gold spawners. Watching these purples at the moment then. Just looking for any respawners at the moment, as you can imagine. Flame Sword and Roy both trapped down low on this map. And I feel like the Construct's one of those maps where at seven to one, even though it seems like a big commanding lead, even if you manage to get top control back and if you manage to get a couple of power weapons in your hands, it's a kind of lead you can manage to get back. Trade comes in here, and it's actually going to be Roy, I believe, who is still up top. Tusk is actually dropping down with this sniper rifle to try and find Roy. However, he's going to take some shots in the back. Flame should get up top as well if he can. Now, right after this, it's a really nice play. You just saw that the camo did pop, so that's going to be a master fear grab. You're going to try to get up gold. Able to do so. Roy picks up a kill, though, so this game is much closer than it was moments ago. Keep in mind, it was just 7-4. to four, uh, Excuse me, 7-1. to one, Now 8-4. to four. So the... Uh, the uh, oh, wow, what a prenade on open glass. Nice with job, though, for Master Fear there. to stay alive. Oh, Whoa. Roy with the camo eyes. Screw that. Flame sword has got the finish on that one as well. That camo could have been huge here for one time, but the veteran plays, and they might be a little bit older, Andy, but the eyes are still nice and sharp. Yes, they are. Flame's going to try to stay alive here. To see, we'll, we'll, we'll try one more time, because uh, that's Flame starting to scream, but the Master Fear uh, label there. So we'll go ahead and pull that off and make sure we get this right. 10 to 5 now in favor of one time. Some great oh. shots, though. Big shot coming Flame. in from Flame Sword, as you say, Andy. Taking down that player, and now Roy's going to have the sniper rifle. Going to be challenged here by Tusk. Great grenade from Roy to back him up. Do that damage before he charged back in. And now 
Score, getting much, much closer. And with this sniper rifle in your hand, you know he has the opportunity to take over again. Misses the no-scope! Hits the headshot, though, a Master Fear! That's Roy on your screen, Ooh. tries to go for two. Not able to do it, we'll have to see. Looks like Tusk gonna fly out, try to challenge Flame, who has the rockets. Flame gonna maybe try to get out of dodge, but uh, Roy, who was just off spawn, gets taken down as well. So just like that, it's a 14 to 8 lead in favor of one time. Now we're on board with Master Fear. Sniper in the sword area, then able to look at both of the streets. Able to watch anyone who's dropping R1. Flames off there, looks for the quick scope, misses two shots there. Flame does some damage, and here comes Roy to charge in and finish off that kill. Master Fear manages to pick up the kill and trade it out, but again, they trade out the kills. 15 to 10 at the moment. No. Very, very close game, but Sniper Rifle in control of Roy now. Yep. Roy going to be watching anyone trying to fly into closed. We just heard from Wonderboy that camo's around 54, so be going to be keeping an eye on everyone dropping bottom middle to try to scoop that up. Key point in the game. Camo's coming up, and I think Master Fear down the bottom at the moment has rockets as well, so maybe he's going to try and bait this custom power up, that camouflage. We're dropping down now, and that is exactly what happens. Here's the body. Doesn't Ooh. get the finish, though. Can't finish off the kill on the camo player, and that could come oh. back to bite him, but we've seen that so many times over the years from Roy. The perfect four. Roy checking all the ramps as well as the lifts, but now back on board with Tusk, who's trying to make a sword push. Six kill lead, comfortable for him. Might be able to get a back whack here, too, but Roy knows exactly where to look. Roy then trying to stay alive. His teammates coming around the corner here to try and help him out. Camouflage. Could be something to really extend this lead here, Andy. Say so Optic Gaming did a great job initially of shutting down the first camo that came up. The camo wise from both of the players, but Master Fear getting aggressive with his teammate Tusk that we're watching right now. And they're really putting this camouflage to use. You do get a lot of time with it. And with that beatdown, he might be able to create another kill for his teammate. Yeah, we'll have to see right now. Both Flame and Roy get pushed all the way back to the lobby. They have to wait a moment. Flame's fighting alone. Need to make sure that their shields can get back together. Right now, they've been baiting and switching in, 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 in really not the ideal way as their shields have been really down to half on each of those engagements, now 19 to 12. Six kills then to go. To finish this one off, Roy picks up another kill here. Tusk could be pushing into the lobby. Roy's going to be challenging him, and Roy hit some nice shots here. Roy could get the finish. Flame Sword, that's much more encouraging baiting and switching coming out of Optic Gaming here. 19 to 14. Roy's going to have to do some defensive work. Gets the beat down, but somehow Master Fear managed to get the trade. Master Fear, great job to finish that. Also a great job from Roy to use that lobby angle. Tries to get the back whack. It doesn't connect, though. Five kills here separating these two. Sniper was up, and it is now in the hands of Tusk. Custom coming up around 49. It looks like one time they're going to play this one nice and slowly. They have the lead here, Andy. Talked about, you heard Gaskin talking about how lifting gold. Lots of ways to uh, to hide, maybe wait for that power up. But it looks like they're actually making a play. Maybe they're the expecting. Rockets. It's kind of the double bluff it. Yep. Rockets, you just saw them drop. Great. Oh, oh no! my God! Oh, I think we my might word. have just seen Roy's career ended for the second time. Wow. Roy with a perfect gold closed flank. We thought he had to jump on Tusk. Tusk hits the quick 90 degree no scope. And they also get a camo as a result as well. I have no words for what has just happened in front of me. That is one of the Jeez. craziest shots I have ever seen in competitive Halo 3. That was absolutely insane. And they got rockets as well. They got the camo. I mean, Tusk also went and hit, hit the shot on Flame, made gold as well for that to get cleaned up. Master Fierce managed to yep. snipe Flame Sword here. Rocket and Camo in the hand of Tusk, and he can pretty much finish this game off here. If he finds this kill, Roy's going to be taken down. Flame Sword, this could be well be the end of the game. There it is! The final kill does come Jeez. in, and I mean, oh, I'm still shaking from that play we just saw, Randy. I still can't believe what I just saw from one time. I cannot wait to see that clip again. He has got to be happy with how that went. Excuse me, Tusk has got to be happy with exactly how that went down. On the other side, though, It'll be a new day for Flame and Roy as they get ready for the next map. Yeah, Flame Sword. I mean, unfortunately for him, 5 and 17 from him. That's not going to get it done, unfortunately. Nope. Uh, looking at Roy, 10 and 8. He went positive too, but on the other side, 17 and 8, I believe it was, uh, from one of the players there. I think it was Master Fear at the top of the leaderboard there. That's an incredible performance, but I just make sure the replays come in soon because I want to see this shot again. I have not seen a shot like this. It, it was just unbelievable to watch. Got to say, credit to uh, the guys of Optic Gaming, Flame and Roy, for bringing this game back as much as they did, because remember, they were down 7-1 off of the break. So to keep this close around the midpoint was quite spectacular. 
But in the end, it was really all one time. Yeah, it really was one time. They did a great job of controlling power-ups, power weapons. We saw them in the rockets a lot of the time as well. And I think this is the shot from Tusk. And whoop, there it is. Ooh. Goodbye, Roy. Go and join your brother. Jeez. Heretic up next. Going to be an opportunity for Flame and Roy to get back in this series. Force a game three in arrows. We've seen them play quite well, of course, on this map so many times, but they're going to have to really put something special together because I have a feeling that the guys on one time, they're going to be really thriving off that momentum. I mean, not only did they win that game by 10, but also for Tusk getting shots like that. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's pretty Confidence impressive. Confidence builders, we'll call them. And uh, However, we know the mentality of the two players the other side of the stage. Roy and Flame saw they have the mentality to come back and shake that first game loss of. Of course, it's still best of threes here. So Roy from Optic Gaming is choosing to go towards the pink tower early on, avoiding all of these plasma grenades. Gets that inch to explode off towards the pink street. Master Fear is going to be in front of him. They do trade that kill, though. You have to wonder if he just sat there for an extra second. If Master Fear would have gone up to Pink Street and not seen him in that nook, you can hide pretty well there. Oh, that's Great a stick, though. stick from Roy. Stick from Roy. Master Fear is going to be caught under the base here. Tries to exchange a stick of himself. And at the moment, it's a game of catch with plasma grenades. Tusk lifts up. Roy should get the easy finish on that. Three to one lead here. Should Make that a four up. to one lead. Yeah, great job there. Great angles there, shooting into the bottom of the base from the needles as well as the front base. That really allows you to pop out and clean up, and now they're starting to rotate on the bases as well. Yeah, Flame Sword's going to be pushing in here, but oh, he gets caught off guard. Master Fear was just waiting around the corner on the car side of the map, and now they're going to be respawning on that car side of the map. Flame Sword's in a battle, but Roy's just looking to flank round, maybe finish off some kills of his own. Tusk's going to be in the 1v1, and Tusk wins the 1v1. Roy had him there, even though he was down a shot early in the beginning of that battle. Misses the last shot to finish. Now we're tied four to four, just like that. Pink Tower control then in the in the control of one time. Roy picks up the kill though on Master Fear. Shots coming across map. And Tusk is going to have a tough time staying alive, and he's not going to stay alive for too long because there's Roy to finish it off. Keep in mind here, do or die for Optic Gaming. Flame Sword and Roy, your last two Halo Three veterans in this tournament. They're, if they're unable to win this game, they will go home as this is the elimination bracket final. They need to win this to force a game number three on Narrows. So a two-kill lead here for one time. Flame Sword's going to be caught off guard. Sorry, it's a two-kill lead here. Apologies for Optic Gaming. One time now. And Tusk pushing in towards this pink tower. Checks that little corner to make sure there's no sneaky players. Waiting for that back smack. Pick up to P3 now and just looking to put damage down on P3 as we've seen it for years and years. P2, that pink tower, all about laying those shots down and allowing your teammates maybe to push around that Eli and finish off these kills. Is you know a big battle with Roy here, and it's surprising not to see Roy finish that one off. It really is, and we just saw a series of baiting and switching from both sides, and in the end, kills actually just get traded. So uh, Roy and Flame will still be up by three here, nine to six. Master Fear, zero shields whatsoever. He's on the pink Eli here, and he can't quite finish it off. He finally does get those shots to connect. Desperately trying to stay alive the bottom mid, but Tusk does a great job of hunting down that kill and making sure he doesn't get alive. So as long as Flame and Roy can keep up this speed and this pressure, I think they can eke out a win here. But if you, knowing these two, they're going to want to play a, a lot more com comfortably. They're going to want to get a little bit more of a kill cushion rather than playing so close with Tusk and Master Fear, of course. At any moment, we could see them still the lead. Yeah, really good beat down there, and you got, he got the help across map from Roy as well. So communication is still pretty good between these two. 11 to 8 the score. Tusk is going to be lit up on the pink street as well. Flame Swords should get the finish there, but again, Master Fear making sure it's just a one-for-one -one situation. And it's, it's really close between these two teams. We're seeing them really trade kills back and forth, back and forth uh, since the score was around the six kill mark. And uh, if, if this continues, I think uh, there's a good chance we'll see this go through the whole game unless we start to see a little bit more control of areas like Pink 3 where you can really rack up a few kills. Oh, big stick coming from Flamesword there to get that trade. And now Roy's going to be hunting down the last player alive. Respawns come in, so both players will be respawning across the map from each other. See Tusk up in the Pink 2 area. Looking for Flamesword. A little bit of pain and switching going on. He's going to land that plasma grenade down and look for that insta explode to make sure no one can push him. Interesting to see Flame get taken down there once again. I think Roy's going to finish this, so at this rate, right, Flame and Roy, if they keep playing like this, they'll be able to do it. I'm wondering what Tusk and Master Fear are going to do differently to stop this trading, because it's been about six or so kills traded back and forth, and obviously if this continues, they'll lose the game. So they're going to need to change up something slightly to make sure they can string together some more kills rather than just trading. Yeah, I think the thing that's been impressing me most is the ability of the two Optic members to get the first shot on their opponents, put themselves in strong positions, and there we go. Again, Flamesword getting that first shot, creating the 2v1 situation, and then they finished off the kill almost immediately. Master Fear gets one kill there, but 
if he can, can't get away and Roy can finish this, then that could have just been another one-for-one one trade. But Roy can't finish that kill. And now it's a 2v2 situation once again on the map. So now the first five kill lead uh, for a while. The big reason we just saw that was you saw Flame Sword's bold top middle play. It's the first top middle play of the game. Him going there puts himself in danger. However, it lets Roy walk up the pink street and really start to put some damage with that top mid angle. So still a four kill lead. Curious if we'll see Flame make another top mid move. If Optic will play that confident and bold or if they'll just continue with kind of this base and pink control. Master gets the kill, but Roy comes in and that's going to be both players dead there. Big double kill coming in from Roy now. 19 to 14 the score. They're just six kills away now from sending this one to a game three. Tusk and Master Fear are both in the base window right now. Haven't pushed out just yet. Roy wondering if they might have gotten to car just yet. So this is an opportunity for one time to, to certainly put some points on the board. Because as you see, Flame and Roy not exactly sure if they've got to pink yet, if they've pushed out to car. And now looking at them, they have made, looks like uh, both of them a pink push. Flames will then just waiting. Tusk sat up on the Eli here, his teammate in pink too. And are we going to look for him to Master Fear to put a little bit of damage down and then maybe jump out, try and get the finish on one of these kills? Nice mark today. They look like they're rotated to the car side of the map, and you can see it here from Flame Sword. They're just trying to keep distance at this moment, Andy. That's exactly it. Roy, go ahead, checking from the bubble, taking a peek into red, seeing exactly what might be happening over there. They'll get those first shots across map as well, which will really give them an upper hand and allow Flame Sword to push right into the base window. Master Fear then taking down to no shields. Flame Sword desperately trying to get the finish on that one, looking for the kill. Down pink one. Tusk versus Roy. Tusk is going to back down. You can see Flame Sword potentially in position to help out, and that's great teamwork again from these two. They really are working well together yeah. on Heretic here. They really are, and they have been all day. It's been a pleasure to watch these two up by five here. It's a very different game uh, two in this series for them. Certainly not over though. It's still a four kill game as you see Tusk picking that one up. So certainly possible that one time could close this out here if Roy and Flame aren't careful. Yeah, and Master Fear poked out, maybe a little bit overzealous there. Got his shields dropped again before they managed to fully come back. And a little shot from Roy there just made Flame Sword's life so easy. And just to get that kill, and fortunately, he doesn't get the trade on that one. Tusk takes out Roy now. 21 to 18, and the guys on Ultic are just looking for trades at the moment. If they keep working together the way they are, they will yep. get those trades, and they should see this one out. And they can really keep playing the slow out, just, just as they've been for the last few kills. No reason to push out, get caught in any sort of scenario. They still got a three kill lead here. Five minutes left, lots to play yet. Yeah, reload has to come in there from Flame Sword. Roy's going to be absolutely melted. Somehow both Big players finish. stay alive though. Roy gets the kill and Tusk, poor Tusk, oh, is man. no shields under the base. That is disastrous for one time and what a play from Roy to pick up that kill when you are, and the Flame picks up another one now, only one kill to go for them. One kill to go then to send this to a game number three. Here comes Flame Sword, jumps out a little bit Overexcited there, Tusk manages to take him down. Roy's on the flank, Master Fear versus Roy. Grenade comes across the map and he almost caught that one on the shoulder. Expecting a top base push there, but they're together at pink one here. They might be able to do Oh, Roy! He's gonna do the job himself. Yeah, he just finishes off that kill on the uh, the pink nerd there and we're going to a game number three. The legends stay alive here. Wouldn't have it any other way to finish off this Saturday evening in Atlanta. A game number three will decide it between Optic Gaming and One Time. Is it going to be the new guns? Uh, excuse me, is it going to be the uh, veterans or the young guns who are able to push through? It's such an exciting thing to see, you know, that, as you say, this game's been around for so long now, Andy, and I'm sure everyone's been watching it for years and years and years, and we're still talking about players coming to the fore, you know, yeah. being in this position where they're taking on uh, the likes of Roy and yeah. Flame Sword. So it's, it's awesome to see, you know, the generations that this game has spanned, uh, has spanned. And uh, looking at the comparison between map one and map two there, I really feel the teamwork just came together a little bit there for Optic on that map. Looked a little bit shaky on Construct, but Heretic, I mean, it's these guys home. They've been playing it for years. They really have. And keep in mind, this is only, right, a three or four kill game throughout uh, a, a lot of this. But finally, they were able to extend it here to a five kill lead at the 18 to 13 mark. But we saw some very good movements and very good rotations. And what you expect to see from Flame and Roy, they didn't hesitate when they needed to push those kills like you just saw on the Eli. Players bottom base, they made sure to finish those. That's what got them the win. We're going to a game number three. We are going to a game number three. And Gaskin was saying on the desk, this could be the big one here for one time. They've looked super good on Narrows. However, we saw some pretty good plays earlier yep. from Flame Sword, especially here on Narrows. We're ready for our game number three. We're loading in. It's set up beautifully. There's one more place left in our grand finals. Who's going to take? It. Who's going to hit those headshots and who's going to put their place in our finals? Everything to play for here this evening. We've been talking about it, of course. Large cash prize here for this Halo 3 tournament, but so much in terms of bragging rights here. This game has such a legacy in esports history. 
And you got Roy and Flame on one side. Tuscan, Master Fear on the other. Only one team will advance till tomorrow. Here we go then. 25 kills to decide. Who books their tickets to oh, our grand final? What? And Flame Sword throws the Kobe and it lands and finds a target. Are you kidding me? Flame also cannons opening cross map stick into the enemy's snipe to get them both snipes as well as rockets. What a play there from Flame. Dude, this has been crazy. This has been full of montage shots and Flame Sword. Welcome back to the main stage. Looking for any spawners there on cannon. What a great start here for Optic Gaming. Flame and Roy Herb, don't oh, do oh, gosh. Oh, my heart. My poor little heart. Flame teeing up some wild shots there, but of course, their opponents have to be careful. Roy does die right there on R3 with the rocks, so Flame might want to grab those. Yeah, he's going to move in and make sure that he at least locks these down. He's got a couple left in the chamber here. Going to bring them back to Roy. I like that yeah, this yep. is a smart play. Seven, give, share those weapons out. If you can find a BR to, to drop, to pick up, sorry, and drop these rockets up, then... Oh, no. Tusk was sitting Tusk on that L1. Shot. Tusk was sitting on that L1 with Snipe, so... Uh, sniper and Rockets will fall. And now uh, both players here on one time are going to be top middle. Roy does get the Rocket. Oh! In the end, he's got to be careful here in the lobby. We'll double back there as well. So Flame Roy's might have be to lift back. Trapped a little bit here. And as you say, Roy does have a sniper rifle to work with, but he also has some Rockets in the chamber, and that's going to make his defending work so much more easy. Here comes Flame Sword back across the Man Can as well. Tusk trying to hit some quick scopes, and now Tusk. Of all people, is the wow. one having to run away. So I'm not going to lie, it took Flame a lifetime to cannon back. He missed the cannon jump about twice. Luckily, Roy was in the lobby there with those rocks and able to, to stave off any opposition. And now Flame able to help with that battle. 7-3 to three here, a lead for Optic Gaming still. Roy being pressured there from top middle. Looks towards the top mid pocket. Looks up the reload on this sniper rifle as well. Master Fear. Managed to take down Flame Sword around top middle. I'm not sure if he has a sniper in his hand at the moment or if it's just... He does. It will be one battle, but it is going to be a sniper battle. As you say, Andy, now it's all about who can hit that shot. And especially if you look at that score, still 7-4. to four. Master Fear wants to be able to take down Roy in the back lobby. Roy's not going to make it easy sitting here on cannon side. Flame's going to cannon right now. Flame is going to cannon under the quick scope. I'm not sure if that connected or not. Did not. Oh, excuse me, it did. Flame is weak there on the power-up. Looking down to no shields now. Looking for that sneaky angle through the pocket. Master Fear now. A couple of shots came in, as you can see, from R1. Two bullets left in the chamber here, and there's a couple of 1v1 battles going across map, and Master Fear misses the no-scopes, gets the stick, and somehow manages to not stay alive, unfortunately. Both players fall here for one time, and that's a big, big play. Yeah, Roy is able to win that battle. That was a cannon lobby kind of uh, battle versus the, the backstage. Roy tries to finish on Master Fear as well, still 9-5, to five, and this game looks pretty darn similar to what we saw in game number two, if you ask me. Oh, if Flame could keep them alive there, that would have been a big kill, but I bet he'll be able to clean up that kill top middle. Tusk, great Instead, job. Instead, it's a big swing there for one time. They bring the game within two. Yeah, great job milking that death there from, from Tusk, and he's hot on those new rockets as well. Fires one towards the man cannon. Roy manages to pick up the kill, though, on Master Fierce, and now he's going to have to back up a little bit. Flamesword's could put him under pressure, and Flamesword wins that battle against the Rocket player. Looks like Tusk was anticipating him jumping there from L1 to R1. Instead, Flame jumps backwards towards bottom middle. Great job by him to make sure to clean up that kill. And then Tusk moving down bottom middle should get the cleanup. Oh, no, oh, he doesn't! Flamesword! Flame the Guardian Angel keeps Roy alive! Saves the day. Somehow manages to get the proximity of the splash damage of the rockets. There's all sorts of maths going on there. Just in the right place. I couldn't calculate that if I tried. But look at all the help now from Roy in the lobby. They should be able to clean this up. But oh, Flamesword is ready for the cannon spawn. Dude, Flamesword's getting pumped. He's saying, you do not deserve to be sharing this main stage with me. 15 to 7. Oh, there's life in these guys yet. Trying to bet, push out a lobby and they just can't do it. It's going to be difficult for one time. Flame teeing up some ridiculous shots from R1. Roy's there, though, and he might be able to put some shots. He's on the flank here, Roy. Tries to get the stick. Did he manage to sneak him on the pinky toe? Unfortunately not. Now Flame Sword's going to be coming under the pressure from top middle. Yeah, Flame goes all the way back to Ken, uh, but Cannon Lobby and Attic. It's a wise play because Roy spawns right here in Flag Lobby. So if they both just stay alive here, they might be able to push their way out. They've got a seven kill lead, which is quite sizable here. Looks a little, very similar, as I was saying earlier, to game number two. If they can just continue at this pace, they'll be doing quite well. Flame Sword narrowly missing that headshot on the player falling into L1. Well, it looks like he's... Uh... And a little bit adventurous, maybe, on the flag side of the map. Uh, I mean, it's nice to come back to lobby, though. Yeah, in this moment, the pressure really is on one time because Flamesword's ammo has finally ran out on the sniper. has got two shots left, but Roy can just comfortably kind of sit here. You see him on flag right now, just flag box, just waiting, not challenging, don't be over aggressive. Seven kill lead with a little bit of snipe ammo left. Really a nice luxury for them, but I believe we're going to see Master Fear get a new sniper pretty soon. Toss then. 
Moving back towards top middle one again. You're looking at the other screens at the moment. They still haven't moved here, Optic Gaming. They're playing this one nice and slowly, still allowing Flamesword to, to snipe away and use that backstage area to try and hit some shots. Right now, you just saw Master Fears poking out. We have Flame and Roy with the sniper. Flame with uh, two shots left. Roy with the fresh sniper. On the other side, it's Master Fear with the new sniper sitting in R1, trying to get a top mid angle. And this will be huge. If Optic Gaming can take down Master Fear here with both of those sniper rifles in their hand, it really would open things up for them. You can see the battle top middle. Who's going to get adventurous? Master Fear manages to take down Flame Sword, and now you can see Roy's checking his six. He's not sure if he's going to have another player, maybe on the flank, pushing through the lobby, pushing through the flag side or the cannon side, trying to cut him off. Flame gets a jump, though. Take a look at that. He challenges the power-up oh, player, Roy. and Roy finishes great work from Flame to flank down the power-up and send that player right into Roy's hands. Roy misses the headshot there, top middle. Flame Sword's trying to push in and finish it off. Tusk is in a hard place, and again, Roy, what a finish coming in from him. 17 to 9 now. In fail. Oh, oh my! No! Oh! He's off the map, he doesn't but he care. doesn't care. He Roy does not care. is back. Oh my word. Has to plug his headset head, head back in. Maybe had to plug the controller back in. They're up by nine. Roy putting on a show. That's what we're here to see. Moments like that. Look at that. And watch it. We're watching this in the crowd with Gaskin. Look how much Roy and Flame are watching each other's screens. There are full one to two second moments where they aren't even watching their screen whatsoever. So they know exactly where to push and how to do it. It's 21 to 10. Only four kills away from advancing to our grand final. Oh, this is so terrifying here for one time. They're doing everything right. And they're just getting met by the blunt end of a sniper rifle. 21 to 12. But... They have managed to get that weapon back in their hands, in the hand of Master Fear. But you've got to match what Roy's just produced. I mean, you could not ask for more impressive plays there, hitting that no-scope top middle, and now being Five so close remaining. to closing out this game. For the side of Master Fear and Tusk, uh, what a mountain they oh, have to shook. climb to get back in this game. Yeah, these guys are shook right now, and not surprisingly, Roy now in a 1v1 battle with Master Fear. Master Fear manages to get that kill, though. See Flame Sword flying over the man cannon, trying to get the finish. On the kill that Roy created, now Roy's going to be in a 1v2 situation here. They need to get this kill quickly and then turn around to prevent Flamesword coming up on the flank. Yeah, Flamesword actually, I think, stayed on the other side. No, excuse me, he did cannon back. Great call there, Mark, because he's able to come back aside and pick up that kill, which is a big one, even though we were just at 21 to 14. To get that kill on the board is big. It slows things down, but we are going to see a rocket grab for Ma uh, Master Fear. Yeah, and unfortunately for him, he's got no re weapon of range. Finally manages to pick up a BR and get away with these rockets. Now it's kind of a risky moment for them. Roy's going to be put down to low shields, top mid. Good shots there from Master Fear to keep his teammate alive. But now it's a decision to be made. Do you man cannon? Do you try and push back and use these rockets? Put yourself in a position to get a kill with only two deaths to play with. He's just running away at the moment, fearing for his life. That's all he can do, right? He finally got a teammate to spawn here, but only two kills to go. These could be the final push here from Flame and Roy. Flame sword then with the sniper rifle. Maybe it's your turn. We've seen what Roy can do. Flame with a double here will end this and book a grand finals place for Optic Gaming. Master Fear up in the attic. Oh. He gets the kill on Tusk. Look at Last that. player alive is in the lobby. He's trapped flag side of lobby. Roy's pushing in. Respawn is there. Tusk no shield whatsoever, but they can't quite finish this. Roy might drop down R1 to help finish that. And it looks like he is going to check. Flame Sword, though, game in his hands as a player rocks across. That's oh. an airstrike that takes him down. Roy is still stuck around the back lobby trying to find that last kill. Yeah, Roy's pushing in now. Rockets went up the, off the map as well. Flamesword now on the power-up, just playing this one so well. Master Fear, though, with the rockets. They didn't go off the map. He kept them in his hands, and he takes him down. One kill to go. Roy in a 1v1 with Tuscan. How many times have we seen it over the years? Roy wins a 1v1 BR fight. Optic Gaming. They're going to be in your grand finals. Wow. And what kind of situation do you want when you need one more kill? You want Roy in a 1v1 BR battle. He closes it out. He closes it out and goes 13 and 7 in that game. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for the two guys that are on your main stage right now. No, give it up for the four gentlemen that are still on your main stage right now. But Roy and Flamesword, what a show they just put on on that narrow slayer. Incredible stuff from those two gentlemen. Uh, you know, you just don't lose it, do you? It's the old saying, you know, form is temporary. Class is very much permanent in these guys' cases. I mean, absolutely. Flame also going 12 and 9 in that game playing so well together. I cannot wait to see the replays.
from what Roy was able to do top middle. Uh, amazing stuff, and, and here it is. We're going to see Roy and Flame in the grand finals tomorrow. Yeah, who would have thought that? What year is it, Andy? I have no idea. Still but anyway, know. my voice is going. I think it's time for us to, uh, to maybe go and leave yeah. this right now. And uh, Lottie, for the final time tonight, it's back to you on the desk. Thank you so much, Jens. I mean, I think everyone's voice in this arena is going right now because that was epic, uh, amazing. I'm speechless. Uh, Roy is just hitting every shot. Flamesword is there cleaning up. It is a duo not to be messed with. You know, one time they may look sharp right at the start, but boy, by that last narrow slayer, they just weren't the same team. Right, I've just got one thing as Roy's about to walk onto this stage. I just want everyone in this crowd, there's still a ton of people here. I didn't hear a Roy's our boy chant after that double kill no scope. I wanted to hear a Roy's our boy chant. Can we get a Roy's our boy chant one time? Roy's our boy! Roy's <laughs> our boy! I mean, what an incredible gentleman we do have. Uh, and it was a pleasure to have him on the stage here at DreamHack Atlanta. Gaskin, what do you make of this duo and the way that Flamesword and Roy have performed together? I mean, they make me tingle in places I didn't think I was going to tingle for about <laughs> 10 years. Uh, it was an absolute pleasure to watch. I lost my mind. I think Roy lost his mind a little bit jumping off the map after that insane double kill that he was able to get. But I think we just witnessed an absolute glorious game of Halo 3 and it was truly a pleasure. We did indeed and I do have Roy joining us on the desk so please audience please give it up for Roy having him here it's an absolute pleasure. Um, do you know what I've actually really enjoyed about you Roy is having you celebrating like that on the desk is amazing. I don't see that in Halo 5 very much you know. The old school guys know exactly how to do it. Uh, you were getting really hype up there and rightfully so. What did you make of that series? Yeah, I mean, I, we, we knew it was going to be tough going in. Obviously, they uh, handled the Vader and uh, Guntite pretty well. But yeah, that's the way I play, man. I play with my heart on my sleeve. I put everything I have into uh, everything I do, but obviously Halo as well. So when you uh, pull off clips like that, it, nothing more fires me up than that right there. You know, we probably have some young players at home who really do look up to you. I've seen Twitter going off uh, about how you guys are back on the stage once again. Now, what would you say to some of those guys who look at the things that you do with your double no scopes and just crazy moves that you're performing on stage? You know, guys that want to be like you, do you have any advice to them? Uh, it takes a lot of hard work and dedication, but uh, I'm obviously very thankful for all the support that I've received throughout all my career. But this weekend, it's been awesome to see the turnout for the Halo 3 event. So. Very thankful for that and uh, glad to be here for uh, one last tournament. Now, gentlemen, I'm sure you have some burning questions. I mean, what we just saw was a little glimpse of the past from you, Roy. I mean, I, I've been on the receiving end of that no-scope so many times, I feel like. I know you've got some success in 2v2s. What's it going to take for you to take out this GMS squad this next time around? They're certainly a very good team. Um, the mid or the Heretic game kind of could have gone either way, but uh, we're just going to have to play like that. Honestly, if we catch fire, keep the energy up, I think that's when me and Mike both thrive and play our best. So hopefully we can come out tomorrow and, and continue doing that. And now, no one really knows what's in store for Halo across the next year. If there were to be more Halo 3, can we see more of you? What if this I say please? This is it for me, man. This is it. This is the final, this is the the final last attempt. Time. Well, is there going to be a text to your brother to say, hey, I've done it, now it's your turn? Uh, he's, he's probably watching at home right now, pretty jealous that he's not here, but... I'm, I'm very lucky to have Mike on my team. He's uh, one of my best friends through gaming and best friends in life, but uh, very happy to have him on my side. He's playing great. You know, Ro, I'm sure you've been there many times before, but a Championship Sunday is on the horizon for you now. Uh, what, are your, what are your preparations going into Championship Sundays and maybe back in the day too? Yeah, you just want to try and make sure you get a good night's rest. I think that's the most important thing for me is to stay uh, focused tomorrow and not be tired. So. Get a good night's rest and then come out and, and do what I do tomorrow. Amazing. Do what he does. I mean, and he does it so well. Nobody does it better than Roy on Championship Sunday, I'll tell you that. What is it like teaming with Flamesword again? Uh, you guys are good friends. You can kind of tell that up there. Uh, is that kind of the winning formula? Oh, yeah. I mean, honestly, I probably wouldn't have come to this event if uh, anybody else had asked me other than Flame. So, uh, like I said, I'm really happy to have uh, one of my best friends as my teammate. And it's nice to be able to thrive off of each other's energy and uh, one last rodeo. One last row. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. I cannot wait. Gents, I'm going to ask you now, as we've got him up here as well, what do you think about tomorrow? We've obviously got GMS. They have defeated them once before. Uh, and don't be biased just because we have the man of the moment on stage with us. But how do you feel about Optic and GMS facing tomorrow? Gaskin, I'll start with you. Well, as said, I thought Roy looked angry after he lost. And I think he showed up 
in that loser's bracket final. And if you bring that into the grand final, he's going to have a fantastic opportunity to really show uh, what he's made of. And of course, Flame Sword's going to do more of the same. And Flame Sword, I mean, he showed up as well. It's not like Roy carried the whole game. As a duo, they're incredible. And the amount of screen watching that's going on between these two, there's times where Flame Sword, he's looking at Roy's screen and he's still hitting shots. I don't know how they do it. It's like they've got three eyes. It's incredible. I mean, Flame Sword was making moves. You know, he had the rockets and he was under control. You know, he had it down. And you guys work as a team together. It was a dream. Now, Clutch, I'm going to ask you the same question. What do you think about the GMS Optic lineup? If I was a betting man, which I am, <laughs> I'd be still <laughs> bet against Roy in a finals of a Halo 2 2v2 or a Halo 3 2v2. I mean, I've seen it too many times. This guy's beat me too many times. And even in the finals, Roy, I, I know he has what it takes. And we saw it from Flame in that game three. He played lights out. We haven't said that enough. I mean, their teamwork, it speaks for itself. And, and the first time they played GMS, they kind of were learning how GMS wants to play. I really think that they learned a lot from that series. They can take a lot, and they're going to use it against them in the finals. Well, Roy, we have said all we have to say. The last thing that I want to ask you is tomorrow, are you guys taking the showdown? You never know, but there's uh, nobody that's going to go into champions Championship Sunday more confident than me, so uh, we're going to come out and give it everything we got. Loving it, Roy. Absolutely loving it. Thank you so much for being up here. It was a pleasure to watch you. Honestly, it really was absolutely wild. Uh, well, let's take a look at the bracket as it stands to see where these guys are facing. There they are, the grand finals. It has been filled in. It is official. GMS versus Optic Gaming. That is going to be our first game of the day tomorrow, and I cannot wait. Uh, Championship Sunday starts off with a bang, and I, I cannot be more excited for this. Um, gentlemen, looking at that bracket right now, is this kind of what you expected going into this Halo 3 2v2 showdown? I mean, there was a lot of names that we thought maybe could have gone a little bit further. We had your neighbor, your Ghosty Army. I mean, even Clutch, I think, was competing in this tournament as well. Uh, not sorry, not... You, you, uh, wait, you, you, didn't, you didn't get the chance, <laughs> did you, you? You would know if I was competing because my name would still be on that bracket. Oh, he you probably think? did, but he got knocked out earlier whoa, whoa, on. Whoa, whoa. Exactly. Uh, but yeah, some, some of the more famous names maybe didn't get as far, and some of the players who have played uh, since MCC had the release of Halo 3 have turned up today. It would have been amazing to see those old faces, but at the same time, it's fantastic to see some of the new faces. And I say it like that, because they're not really new. They're, they're kind of old as well. I mean, it's been fantastic. And thank you so much to both of you for being on the desk. Gaskin, it's been lovely having you and hopefully seeing you on here a little bit more tomorrow. Well, that is it, folks. Day two is done and dusted. And we've had some incredible scenes from both Halo 5 and Halo 3. And those scenes couldn't have been possible without our incredible observing team backstage. So a huge shout out to Richie Hines and Wonderboy for the amazing POVs all day long. Well, 10 a.m. EST is the time to be back here. Don't be late, because Championship Sunday is only a sunrise away. I'll see you then.
Join now and get your first month for $1. Our duty as soldiers is to protect humanity, whatever the cost. I will continue my campaign against the humans. That's not going to happen. Chief! 